After some early season struggles, your Rangers have turned Globe Live Park into a tough place for opponents. Having won six straight and nine of their last ten, the home field advantage is now in full swing. Today, the Rangers look for seven in a row at home and a sweep of the Rays. Texas and Tampa meet next on Fox Sports Southwest. Texas Rangers baseball is presented by AT&T, UVerse TV. It is a partly cloudy afternoon, very warm and very humid at Globe Life Park. Rangers hope to continue heating things up. They go for the sweep this afternoon as they host the Tampa Bay Rays. And welcome in, everyone, along with Mark McLemore, Steve Busby. Glad you could spend part of your Sunday afternoon with us. And uh, Ranger baseball, it should be a lot of fun here today. Rangers uh, looking to do something, Matt, that we talked about at the beginning of this series. That's have a good series about a team that they uh, were trailing in the wild card race. Yeah, well, so far, so good. The Rangers have won the first two. They've jumped ahead of the Tampa Bay Rays, and they want to keep it that way. They want to make some more room, get some more room between those two teams. And you look here at the wild card standings as it is. They're a game and a half behind the Angels. They still play the Orioles. They'll play a lot of games, seven ball games against the Angels, and they also play the Blue Jays three games. So every team that the Rangers play, as a matter of fact, the next 10 out of 13 games, Games will be te against teams that are in the wild card race. So they definitely have a say in what they do and how they finish. Not so far so good in this series. Two out of three, or two out of the, the first two, and hopefully three out of three after today. Rangers would love that sweep, and, and they will host the Seattle Mariners for the next series. Rugnet Odor and company Elvis Andrews getting ready to take on the Tampa Bay Rays. will come back with the starting lineup and the first pitch right after this. Dealer. Visit your local Texas Ford dealer to kick off the summer right. 
Ford is the best in Texas. By AT&T UVerse TV. UVerse has more live TV channels on the go than cable. And by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Now a muggy afternoon breeze uh, drifting in from uh, center field here at Globe by Park. Hazy sunshine overhead before we get things underway. Let's head down and check in with Emily Jones. Well, Buzz, after a string of right-handed pitchers, the Rangers facing a tough lefty today in Drew Smiley. Manager Jeff Bannister looking for the, the same production. Drew Smiley against us today. Uh, a very tough opponent, very tough pitcher, and one that, uh, another left-hander that um, it seems like we, we've had every one of them this year, that, that those big left-handers. And so... Uh, but we've got to be on top of our game. We, we're going to ask a lot of a few guys that, that have not been in there regularly. Uh, so, But uh, that's what we need is we need guys to step up this time of year. And so with the lefty on the mound and the day game today, some lineup changes that I know you guys will discuss very shortly here, Buzz. All right, Emily, thank you. Yeah, we will get to the uh, changes for the Rangers. But first, Mac is going to tell you about the Tampa Bay lineup that will face Giovanni Gallardo. All right, leading off for the Rays is the DH, John Jaso. Grady Sizemore with a 291 career average against the Rangers in 56 games will play right and bat second. Evan Longoria is the third baseman and bat third. James Loney has got a 342 batting average in the month of August. He'll bat fourth and play first base. Logan Forsythe at that second. As Drupal Cabrera playing shortstop, batting sixth. Desmond Jennings has been four for six in this series, will be in left field. And that lineup put forth by Kevin Cash in his first year at the helm of the Tampa Bay Rays. Giovanni Gallardo, our progressive scouting report about the 29-year-old uh, veteran right-hander. 8-9 this year, a 3.33 ERA. This is 25th start of the year. He's been working again to uh, improve his tempo and get the consistency down with that improved tempo. And command should improve the more confidence he gains in the changes that he's made. He's lamented the fact last time that he pitched pretty well in Minnesota, but left the ball game before he got through six innings. And he said, you know, under normal circumstances, I should be able to get that ball game into the eighth inning and take the pressure off the bullpen. So he was kind of saying my bad on that one and uh, try to get better as time goes on the rest of this season. No Gallardo on top of the hill getting set to take on John Jay. So to get things underway here this afternoon. Oh, one ball and no strikes. Rays come in at uh, an even 500 at 58 and 58. They, as you saw, are two games back in the wild card, half a game behind the Rangers. They're also four or six and a half games back in that uh, Eastern Division, trailing the Yankees and the uh, Toronto Blue Jays. Rays, an even 500 team, both at home and on the road. And Jaso hits a little chopper foul. The count goes to two and one. Jason getting the start uh, at that number one spot, the leadoff for the second straight day. 94 degree afternoon here at Globe Live Park. Humidity uh, up in the 50% uh, range. Jason a rip and a miss, and it is two and two. Tampa Bay as a team, 13th in the American League with a 245 team batting average. They are 14th in run scored. Gallardo again trying the back door and missed outside. That fills the count. So Jaso leading off has run the count full. He's trying to get aboard for Grady Sizemore, the right fielder. Payoff pitch on the way. Call strike three. Jaso will have to make a U-turn as the home plate umpire Trip Gibson wanted to make sure of the call. And uh, Jaso a little discouraged as he heads back to the raised dugout. Gallardo with strikeout number one. Nice pitch by Gallardo going to the back door. Looks like it caught just a little bit maybe on that Fox tracker. He gets the call. No, oh, one out. And Grady Sizemore, a 233 average, steps up. The off-injured Grady Sizemore, he's had a battle back from more injuries than one human being should uh, have to in a career. He's had uh, five major surgeries over the last five years. <laughs> Takes a strike, both knees, his back, elbow, knees again. 
It has been a long road back, but Grady Sizemore, you have to admire his stick to itiveness. He, uh, he is not going to give up. Pitch fouled back to the screen. It's one ball and two strikes. Yeah, you really do, Buzz. It's just not something that most players can come back from, especially when you have uh, both knees operate, operated on, a back issue that you have to have operated on, an elbow, and then your knees again. Uh, that's that's very tough. That's a lot of rehab time in between. Fouled out of play. Yeah, and that rehab is probably the least fun thing to do of, of anything involved in athletics. You know, it, it, it's very difficult doing rehab stuff because you're not, it's not baseball stuff. It's right. you're rehabbing a particular injury. So then once you finish that rehab, then you have to get into your baseball routine, and that can be difficult as well. Sizemore rips one toward the right field corner. It is down and going to the wall. Chu plays the carom, and Sizemore will pull into second with a ringing one-out double. Yavani looked like he tried to do what uh, Colby Lewis did last night to Grady Sizemore. That gets the ball down and in off the plate and didn't quite get it there. Sometimes this is a game of inches, and that uh, a few inches on the plate, Sizemore ripped it. Yeah, that's exactly what happens when you miss a location. That ball is in a few more inches. It goes down under his bat, just like yesterday against Colby Lewis. But like you said, Buzz, it's a game of inches. So, first base runner of the ball game, Grady Sizemore, a one-out double, has himself in scoring position. And here's that man again for the Rays, Evan Longoria, the third baseman. Longoria has had uh, a couple of big run-producing base hits in this series. He's driven in four on a couple of singles. Longoria, the team leader for Tampa with uh, 54 runs driven in, hitting at 277. Nice pitch by Giovanni to get him uh, off balance a bit. It's no balls and two strikes. You know, Buzz, you, when he came to bat, you said, that man, that's exactly right. He's that man that you don't want to let beat you. He gives the, if he has the opportunity, you want to try and either pitch around him, put him on first base. But, mm -hmm. you know, there are some situations like in yesterday's ball game that you, you've got to go after him. But that man is not one that you really want to mess around with too often. Well, Longoria trying to go up the ladder, and he didn't have one quite that high. Good job by uh, Gallardo to keep the ball out of the middle of the strike zone. Longoria tied up on that. So two strikeouts in the inning. Two away, James Loney now will step up. That's what you call that uh, that at bat for Longoria. Gallardo pitching around him effectively. Did, didn't walk him, didn't, uh, but never gave him anything that he could do much damage with if he'd made, gotten bat on the ball. Right, when you, you know, and Longoria's swinging the bat well right now as well. So when you're facing a guy like that, that's swinging the bat well, uh, is a very good hitter, an RBI guy. Sometimes you just have to hope they get themselves out. Yeah, yeah. I think that was a case in point right there. Yeah. You know, you threw him uh, three pitches out of the strike zone, basically, and that uh, that was a good at-bat for uh, Giovanni Gallardo. Loney takes that changeup that drifts off the outside corner. James Loney, 269 average with four home runs. And 22 driven in. Sizemore steps his lead off from second base right there at the bottom of your screen. Now Gallardo and uh, Bobby Wilson not able to get together on the signs for the next pitch. But let's take a look at uh, the Rays' third base coach, Charlie Montoya. He is way down that line. <laughs> That's got to be a scary spot right there. Ground ball up the middle. It is through for a base hit. Sizemore will score. James Loney with a seeing eye ground ball that eluded both Rubnet Odor and Elvis Andrus. And the Rays jump out on top, one to nothing. Guerrero got one out over the plate, trying to go inside. Again, missing his location. And Loney bounces it right through the middle. Odor goes after it. Elvis goes after it. Nobody can come up with that one. So a double 
And a two-out RBI base hit gets Tampa on top. And Logan Forsythe takes a pitch for strike one. Forsythe, second on the Rays team with 51 RBI. 13 home runs, a two, six, or 275 average. Wraps one in the center. That's a base hit. A pitch out over the plate, and Forsythe made Gallardo pay two on with two out. Well, we have a second here. We'd like to uh, show you the Ranger defense delivered to you by DeMontrant RV. 542 total chances for Elvis Andrews this year. That's the most among Major League shortstops. Strasburger gets a start in left this afternoon. Chu and DeShields also in the outfield. Napoli at first. Odor joining Andrews up the middle with Beltre at third and Bobby Wilson catching. And there are the right-handed bats that uh, Emily Jones was talking about earlier with Napoli and, and Bobby Wilson and Strasburger all in the lineup against the left-hander Smiley. But the Rays have given Drew Smiley a lead before he's ever had to take the mound. one nothing Tampa Bay, and as Drupal Cabrera, maybe the hottest man on the planet, takes strike one. Cabrera, 265 average overall. That may not seem like much, but considering where he was about a month and a half ago, that is some great stuff. Right center field to Shields on the run. He dives and makes the catch. Delano fooled just a little bit, but boy, what a great job of closing the gap and making the diving catch to save more runs. Tampa Bay gets on the board, a run on three. It's they leave two after half inning. The Rays won, the Rangers coming up. lineup. Well, Shin Su Chu is going to hit second tonight. He had a great night last night. Three for four, a double and a home run. Adrian Beltre is going to back clean up, play third base. He had his 405th career home run. That ties him for 52nd all time. And Bobby Wilson is going to be behind the plate tonight, batting eighth. He's got a 333 batting average in seven games with four hit, four hits, or four of those hits and six starts. And Delano to Shields at the top of the order will lead things off against the left-hander Drew Smiley. Smiley making his first start since coming back off the disabled list. 26-year-old left-hander from Arkansas. A very crafty left-hander. Doesn't uh, throw hard enough to break the radar guns around, but uh, hard enough that when he gets that cut fastball and curveball combination going, he can be as tough as anybody. Rangers have not had a lot of luck against him. Ranger hitters, though, will try and get his pitch count up by making him throw a lot of pitches early in the game. Smiley over his career is two and one but with a 225 ERA against the Rangers. The 2 1 pitch to DeShields. Three balls and a strike. So Delino doing his part. Eyeballing uh, three pitches out of the zone. Delino, a 266 hitter, 
Trying to get aboard to start things off. Shin Tzu Chu is next. And ball four. Oh, Delano to Shields works a leadoff walk. What on nobody out. Let's take a look at the Rays defense behind Drew Smiley here this afternoon. Outfield as it was last night. Jennings, Kiermaier, and Sizemore. As Drew Cabrera, second among shortstops with that 988 fielding percentage. Forsyth joins him up the middle, Loney and Longoria at the corners, and Kurt Casale back behind the plate. As Drew Cabrera may not have the range that he did, yeah, say, four or five years ago with Cleveland, but everything he gets to, he catches, and he's very accurate throwing. You know, that's what you really want. You want a shortstop or an in or a fielder, period, to make all the routine plays. And Cabrera is one of the best at it. Now, you know, as far as going deep in the hole or way up the middle, making those spectacular plays. Hey, if you get to it, great. But I want that infielder and outfielder to make the routine play 10 out of 10 times. That's why it's routine. Right. 0-1, the count to Chew. And Smiley will work on Delano to Shields at first base. Chew and DeShields pulled off a uh, double steal in last night's game. Jinsu, 15 home runs now, 53 RBI. There goes DeShields, pitches outside, and Casale can't get the handle on the throw. Uh, just like that, Delino a walk, and he turns that into a double with a stolen base. A great read by DeShields. He read really quickly that Smiley was going to the plate. Got a great jump and no chance for Casale back there. And that's what speed does. It puts pressure on that defense. The 21st stolen base for Delano to Shields. He's had one in each of the two games here against Tampa in three games. That drive is over the head of Kiermaier in the center field being waved around third. Here comes the shield. The throw not in time. Delano to Shields using his great speed to score on Shin Tzu Chu's double. And this ball game is tied at one. Chu continues to be hot in that two hole. He drives this ball over the center fielder's head. Kiermaier didn't have a chance to get that one. You know that uh, Chu blistered him, but Kiermaier can't run it down. You see the shields going back, not sure if that ball's going to be caught, so he's trying to, try to tag. But he takes off, and with his speed, he's going all the way. Nice hit, first slide. He's in there. Not many guys can essentially tag up and score from second on a fly ball. No, <laughs> they can't. That, that was some pretty good wins right there. <laughs> and it gives Chu his 54th RBI of the year. Gets the Rangers back even. And still nobody out here in the first for Prince Fielder. Smiley to the plate and Fielder. A little tardy on the pulling the trigger on the swing. Take you back to that slide. Getting that hand in under the uh, shoe of uh, Kurt Casale, who actually was in the wrong position. He yes, could he have was. been called for blocking the plate without the he ball. He could have been. So I think we were going to get that run one way or the other. You know, that's got to be a tough habit for catchers to break because that's all they've been taught their entire career. Gearmeyer's going to have to go back after he misjudged that off the bat. But Chu, a chance to move up, and he does with a slide. And he is at third now with one out. It's uh, Prince Fielder. Did a pretty long line drive to center for the out. Gearmeyer had a little bit of trouble picking that ball up off the bat. And, you know, a lot of people think that it's easier to see a baseball in, 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 the day, in day games, but it's really not. It's a lot tougher. We've seen a few guys already have a little bit of trouble uh, seeing the ball. Chu does a great job getting back to tag and getting over to third base with less than two outs. Now, Smiley will have a test with Chu at third. The infield pulled all the way in. Adrian Beltre is five out of eight against Smiley. By far the uh, best average of the Rangers against Smiley. And Beltre, as Mac told you, his 10th home run of the year last night is 405th in his career. That ties him with Miguel Cabrera for 52nd place. Inside two and all. You see the Shields take off from second base. He's on in full tag position and still coming around. My good 
as he could go. Love seeing a guy run. Yeah. Well, a guy that's fast. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you see a lot of his runs. Yes. Yeah, it's not pretty. I wonder if Smiley knows how well Beltre hits him. You think? Uh, yes. <laughs> and if he happened to forget, I think Adrian's going to remind him here shortly. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. Now, that, that's something you know without ever having to look at a stat page. <laughs> You also know the guys that don't hit you, but sometimes, well, it's easier to remember the guys that don't. There are not nearly as many of those for most guys. 2-2 Two -two pitch coming. And Beltre again, a foul back. We'll take you back to last night, our at and U-verse Rewind, Adrian Beltre. Breaking this game wide open last evening. Kirby Yates served it up, and Adrian, 425 feet out into the Rays bullpen. And a three-run jack for Adrian. Change up low and outside. The count has gone full now at three balls and two strikes. Well, Beltre trying to keep this going. Yeah, Chew at third with one out. Beltre hitting in front of Mike Napoli. Nap ready for his uh, second start in a Ranger uniform this time around. Payoff pitch. And another foul ball. Interesting is Smiley, and part of the things that he changed coming over from Detroit, not a hard throw as we talked about. You know, average Major League fastball, but he was uh, a pitcher who really focused on throwing the ball down. The Rays wanted him to start throwing more high fastballs, elevate the fastball more often. And Beltre, a fly ball to right. Sizemore in position to make the catch and the throw. Chu tagging. Here comes Chu and Sizemore not able to get him with that throw. And Adrian Beltre gives the Rangers the first inning lead. It is now 2-1 to one on the sacrifice fly. Great job by Beltre. You want, to get the, you want to get a hit, of course. But you want to drive that run. That's your number one goal. You got the infield in. Your job as a hitter in that situation, you want to you want to fly ball to the outfield. Typically, you want to look for something up in the zone. Smiley kept that one down. Beltre still puts some good good wood on it, good enough to get it deep enough out to right field to score that run from third base. Great at bat. Yeah, Mike Napoli going up there looking for something to drive on the first pitch, and he swung through it. Napoli 0 for 7 as a Ranger. 0 for 6. Excuse me. Five of those have been pitch hitting assignments. Fouls it out of play. He's down to the count now. No balls and two strikes. Nat joined the ball club last week when uh, came over and joined him in Seattle after being acquired from the Boston Red Sox. Out of play to the right. But getting back to Smiley, uh, they wanted to throw, uh, the Rays wanted to throw more fastballs up in the zone. And they think they feel that that's going to counter his uh, big curveball and change up better. Get those down in the strike zone. That's an interesting philosophy. I mean, you certainly can't uh, fault the Rays for the pitching success they've had over the years. And speaking of that, we'll take a look at the, uh, today's Kubota power stats. Drew Smiley, 10 starts since joining the Rays. Last season, he came over at the trade deadline, three and two in his career with Tampa with a 196 ERA. Opposition just 159. And Napoli shoots and foul. A couple of streaks that he brings into this game. Uh, ten straight games, ten straight starts with the Rays, uh, allowing uh, two or fewer runs. And also, nine straight starts of allowing four or fewer hits. And Napoli got caught looking at a fastball in the outside corner, and that'll do it. But the Rangers gain the lead. They get two runs on one hit and a walk. Nobody left after one. Rangers two, Rays one.
fan photo. Use hashtag Southwest Data Strong Fan, and you just might see yourself on one of our upcoming broadcasts. It's all brought to you by the good folks at T-Mobile. We'll show you today's selection a little bit later on in the ball game. Oh, Giovanni Gallardo has a, uh, a lead with which to work. 2-1 Rangers. Dealing here in the top of the second inning to the bottom third of the Rays order. That's Desmond Jennings. And Des Gen Desmond Jennings finds himself ahead of the count. Two balls, no strikes. Jennings, another Ray that's just coming back off the disabled list. This is third game back. He's had a good series against the Rangers. Uh, four out of six in the first two games. 2-1 pitch from Gallardo. Popped up, Napoli. Gonna have to battle the uh, corner of the commissioner's box seats right there and runs out of room. Two and two. You know, I was talking a minute ago, Buzz, about you know how difficult it is to see in day games, especially when you've got clouds, you've got glare, you've got empty seats, you've got seats that are full, so your backdrop uh, especially as an infielder, you can lose that ball rather quickly on line drives and even ground balls because it's just going in and out of either empty seats or people with certain, you know, different color shirts on. Right. It's very difficult. Right center field, another long run for the liner of the Shields. He can't get it. It's by him and to the wall. Jennings not stopping at second. He is headed for third, and he will be in standing. With a leadoff triple here in the second inning. That ball kind of fooled Delino. Put it on uh, cruise control for just a second, then the ball shot by him. Yeah, it looked like he was going to run it down, but it's a little warm out here. That ball just kept going. See the shields lays out for it. That, you mentioned the temperature out here. That, that does make a huge difference in this ballpark, doesn't it? It really does. It, it's just going to carry. You know, it doesn't carry like it used to, but it carries. Shooting the ball the other way, Kevin Kiermaier. He will drive home Jennings. Kiermaier going for two. The throw by Strasburger not in time. So back-to-back -back extra base hits. The Rays have come back to tie it against Gallardo. It's 2-2. Two -two. Pretty good job of hitting by Kevin Kiermaier, just taking it the other way with authority. Right now, it looks like Gallardo's having a little bit of trouble locating his, his pitches. Everything's pretty much been out over the middle of the plate. Kiermaier gets a hold of that one and slaps it by Beltre down the left field line. Drives in the second run for the Rays. Well, two runs on five hits now for Tampa Bay. The number nine man up there, Kurt Casale, gets the butt down. Gallardo's only play is to first. That is out number one with Giermeyer moving over to third. So the sacrifice for Casale, and that'll take the Rays back to the top of the lineup. Ranger infield now with uh, John Jaso up there. We'll shift to the right slightly and also come in. Like uh, Odor and Andrews up the middle will play just in back of the cut of the grass. We've got a speedy runner at third and Kevin Kiermaier. Nice block by Bobby Wilson. One ball, no strikes. Jaso caught looking at strike three his first time up. He'd run the count full and Giovanni Gallardo got the call right at the bottom of the strike zone. Good look at the Ranger defensive alignment. Elvis as close to playing right behind the pitcher as possibly can be. Tapper foul, and the count evens at one and one. Now as an infielder, what you saw there, you saw Kiermaier going as soon as Jaso made contact. So as an infielder, you see that, and you tell yourself, okay, I've got to move in a little bit. Odor, in my opinion, is just a little bit too, too far back to be able to get a guy that's going on contact with the speed of Kiermaier. So you've got to make sure that you see that. Those are the little things that you can pick up that can help you save a run. Another tapper foul. And again, Kiermaier off with contact. Now, if you're 
a veteran infield, you, would you make sure that Odor knows that? Uh, I would. Yeah, point it out to him? <laughs> Absolutely. Just in case? Absolutely. Well, I, mean, I would imagine everybody would share that information with each other just in case you didn't see it. Yeah, you, you do have to. Somebody, somebody sees it, I hope. Right. And, you know, you've got to pass that on. It's all about communication. If somebody, somebody else may not see it, somebody's got to be able to pick it up. The one-two pitch coming. Now two and two. Boy, Bobby Wilson getting uh, his uniform dirty back there. He has had to block uh, several pitches in the dirt here in the early going. Jay, so a 329 average. On three out of five in this series so far. Hard hit through the drawn in infield. That is an RBI single as Kiermaier scores. Jaso with his 12th RBI of the year. And just like that, the Rays have gone back out in front. It is 3-2 to two, Tampa Bay. Arrow staying out over the plate, trying to get that ball on the outside part of the plate. But it ends up pretty much, uh, well, it is off the plate a little bit. Jaso stays on it. Looks like he's on the plate just a little bit. Jaso drives it back up in, up the middle. Got a good look for that shot we had in center field about what a cut fastball looks like. It was uh, supposed to be a backdoor cutter that Giovanni Gallardo tried to sneak All by right, Jason. Right, even though he had it on the right part of the plate, it didn't really have that quick late break that you're looking for. Kind of a backup cutter, if you will. So Jaso now at first after the RBI base hit. Rays back up on top. Here's Grady Sizemore who doubled into the right field corner in the first. There goes Jaso. The pitch is fouled down as the hit and run was on. Sizemore tipping that pitch and uh, Jaso will have to go back to first. Hey, you look at the Rays and the, the batting average is not indicative of a team that's 500. Neither is the run score. They're both in the bottom two or three of the league, but they do the little things well. They hit and run well. You saw the sacrifice from the uh, number nine hitter, Kurt Casale. Big on extra base hits. Maybe not a lot of home runs, but they get the job done. There's a pop-up on the infield. Rugnet Odor calling everybody off. Two gone. Good pitch there by Gallardo, getting it in to Sizemore. Third is Evan Longoria. Now, before uh, Evan Longoria comes up, let's say hello to Jim Knox. All right, Buzz, appreciate it. You know, the last couple of weeks, the Texas Rangers are proud to host the RBI uh, World Series. That's right, the girls and, and boys, baseball and softball. The baseball had their championship game here yesterday, right here at Globe Life Park. In the senior division, Miami won out. In the junior division, Dominican Republic won out on that one. And all the kids had a great time playing Baseball right here at Globe Life Park, and here's your toughest guy in the stands today, Buzz. This guy, what is he trying to do, lose weight or something? It's like the Italian <laughs> stallion Rocky Balboa trying to train today or something. Hey, Kaczynski. <laughs> yeah, I had a cold front go through here about an hour ago. Longoria, a little late pulling the trigger on that swing. It's one ball, one strike. Longoria 0 for 1. He went down swinging the first time up there. Rays with one of the first and two here in the second, reclaiming the lead after the Rangers went on top with two in the bottom of the first inning. And again, Longoria, a little late picking that ball up, I guess it is, out of Gallardo's hand. You mentioned, Mac, on a day like this, uh, really a little bit tough to see. Is that the same thing true for picking the pitches up? Absolutely. You'll see a few guys out there that have uh, their, sh their sunglasses on. Well, Elvis saw that one well off Longoria's back. Going to his left, grab the line drive. That'll do it. But the Rays regain the lead. They get two runs on three hits and lead one after one and a half. 3-2 Tampa Bay.
Rangers baseball on Fox Sports Southwest is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealer. Visit your local Texas Ford dealer to kick off the summer right. Ford is the best in Texas. Now, however you want to enjoy a hot dog, it's uh, all very personal to you. That's great. Wow, that's a new way to do it, isn't it? <laughs> I've not seen that one. I haven't either. He's not having any problem, though, with it. No, it looks like he's had a lot of practice at that. <laughs> Elvis Andrews starting things off for the Rangers here in the second inning. Rangers now find themselves trailing by one once again as Drew Smiley gives up the butt base hit for Elvis Andrews. Perfectly placed. The Rangers do that better than any other team in baseball. That is the 29th butt single for the Rangers this year. Taking advantage of a left-hander that falls off toward third a little bit. And Elvis aboard to start things off. You know, I'm not sure if Elvis could have thrown that ball out there any better than that. No one has a play. Smiley falling off to the third base side of, of the field, going away from it. Foresight just can't get there. Perfect bunt. Well, the second Ranger hit of the afternoon off of Smiley. Here's Rugnet Odor, 273 average. Strike one. Take a look at our uh, Ford leaderboard for you this afternoon on base percentage. Rangers, since the beginning of August, uh, the best on base percentage in the American League, 343. Cleveland, Boston, Chicago, New York, on down the list. Rugnet slaps it out of play to the left side. It is nothing in two. Talked about the Rangers since the All Star break about. Uh, how good they've been. Those numbers for August even more impressive. Rangers leading the major league since the All-Star break with a 284 batting average. 0-2 pitch. We'll try it again. I like what Odor is doing right now, Buzz. He's got that hole over there short between short and third, and he's shooting for that hole. Cabrera's playing up the middle. So he's got a huge hole over there that he's aiming for right now. Seems like Rugnet against left-handers, too, has tried to do that a little more frequently. Take the ball the other way. Is that a pretty good approach for him? Very good approach. Very good approach. You start trying to pull those left-handers, and all you're really going to do is either hit pop-ups or roll it over to second base or first base. And Smiley, one of the toughest against left-handed hitters. Went up. There's that high fastball we were talking about. Rubdet could get on top of it. That's a big strikeout number two. Pitch can be very effective if you get it up enough and obviously not too high. Especially with hitters, they see it, they see that ball up near their eyes, and it looks like a beach ball, but you cannot catch up to it. I guess after seeing everything away, it kind of surprises you when that ball get, gets on you that quick, too. It does. So one out, Elvis st still at first. Bobby Wilson, Ranger catcher, up there for his first at bat. Wilson has had hits in four of his six starts prior to today. Also driven in a run in half those starts. Elvis drawing a few uh, cursory throws over there. Nice shot from our wedgie cam right down the right field line. Get a good idea of how big that lead for Elvis is. Pulled on the ground to short. Cabrera to second just in time. Well, a bang, bang play at second. Elvis hightailing it down to second very quickly. And Cabrera taking the uh, short route but almost didn't make it. Yeah, that's pretty close. I kind of thought, you know, just uh, looking he made it but did not. That's a pretty close call. So Bobby Wilson on with the fielder's choice ground out. And Ryan Strasburger now will come to the plate. Strasburger, you remember, started the uh, last two games in Minneapolis after uh, Josh Hamilton came down with a bad left knee. And Josh left yesterday's game early, limping around a little bit. And Strasburger was probably going to start today against the left-hander anyway. Josh apparently uh, 
available. Should be, be needed off the bench. 1-0 pitch. And Sally having to keep that ball near home plate by blocking it. Two balls, no strikes. Strasburger hitting 143 in his brief appearance at the Major League level. This is fifth start as a big league. And he takes high, ball three. Orion trying to get aboard to join Bobby Wilson here in the second. Delano to Shields and the top of the Ranger order in the on-deck circle. Three and one. Smiley has walked one today. That was the Shields starting the game off, and the Shields promptly stole second and scored. Base hit to right field. Nice hitting. Wilson will pull into second. Strasburger with the base hit. Taking exactly what Smiley was willing to give him. And Ryan with the knock to right. I think this is a classic case. I think this is a classic case of a scouting report that's not accurate. They had an extreme pull on the second base, but Forsythe is pretty much, you know, maybe five, ten feet to the left of second base. That huge hole over on the right side, and everything that Smiley threw was away. He didn't come inside at all. So it's just kind of boggling, mind-boggling to me that you have your infield pulled around for a pull hitter, and your pitcher throws the ball, throws everything away. But we'll take it. Yeah, Smiley talking to Kirk Casale and see if they can come up with something uh, with Delano to Shields up there. The Shields drew a walk and scored, as we mentioned that in the first inning. So Delano who came into the game third on the Ranger team in total walks, adding one to his total. Now with 38 for the year. And Smiley pulling the string on that breaking ball. It is nothing in one. Delino two for six on this homestand. He brings in a five-game hitting streak. As Bobby Wilson at second, Ryan Strasburger at first. One ball and one strike. Delano starting to drive in some runs, too, from that leadoff spot. Now the Ranger offense uh, in much better shape as far as guys getting on up and down the order. The pitch just catches the outside part of the plate. One and two. Yeah, when you've got everybody hitting in the lineup, that just extends the lineup. And that's what's happening, especially with the reemergence of Elvis, you know, in that uh, sixth and seventh spot, swinging the bat, driving runs in, being on base. So that just extends that lineup and makes it that much more difficult to get him out. Two and two now. Yeah, you get your seven, eight, nine guys going, and all of a sudden the top of the lineup has an opportunity to drive in runs more frequently. Such is the case right now for Delano to Shields. Two on, two out, a two ball, two strike count. Casale flashing out the series of signs. Smiley ready. A looper into left center that is down for a base hit. Wilson will score. Strasburger around the third. Delano to Shields with the RBI single. We have a brand new ball game. It is 3-3. Or two out magic by the right. Great job of hitting by the Shields. 2-2 two, two count. He just wants to put the ball in play. Maybe something to happen. And we have the fastest runner, Bobby Wilson, out there at second base. So this was a perfect blue hit to score Bobby Wilson from second without a throw. Great job for the Shields. Cabrera not able to get back and get that one. No, oh, Delino driving in his 25th run of the year. And uh, you can probably bet that uh, first opportunity he's going to take off for second with Chu at the plate. And Smiley 
got to make sure that he has to get that big lead. Let's go down and check in with Emily Jones. Well, guys, today is Delano DeShield's 23rd birthday, and I will give you 100 guesses as to what his favorite gift was, and I guarantee you won't get it. Just give me one. <laughs> one guess. Uh, Xbox. Mac. PlayStation. <laughs> you guys are terrible. We are. A steamer. He was steamer. so Good. excited about a new steamer. He said he's an ironing guy, and yeah. so some steamers just aren't as good as others, and apparently he got a really good travel steamer that he can take on the road. Good. So Delino DeShields, steamer. Very good. Who would have thought? That's great information. Well, that's that's important. Very. It is. You, you, you wouldn't realize how many guys like to do that. You wouldn't realize how many guys don't do that until you see him show up with wrinkles everywhere. <laughs> I must say, though, I was completely blindsided. Yeah, yeah uh, When right. I asked the question, what'd you get for your birthday? And his eyes lit up, and he was like a steamer. And I thought he was talking about like a food steamer. Right. Or uh, he was like, no, I'm an ironing guy. So I got a really good steamer from a, I was like, somebody must know you really well. He said, yep, I got it from a good friend. <laughs> That's some kind of friend. That's very thoughtful. That is. That's a thoughtful present. It's a gift that keeps on giving. Until the holes get plugged up in that thing. <laughs> One ball and no strikes is Shinsu Chu, who had an RBI double his first time up, waits for Smiley. And time called. He was waiting a little too long that time. Oh, boy, Chu. What a good number two hitter does. That pitcher holds the ball a little bit too long. He doesn't want that runner, that base dealer at first base, to get out there and start, you know, shaking a little bit and getting antsy. So you call timeout. Chu with that RBI double now has driven in 54. And that batting average up to 247. Got Strasburger down at third. The liner to Shields at first. So Majors with plenty of speed on the base pass. And the crowd here, not Drew Smiley fans at the moment. You know, I really wouldn't mind seeing the Shields just take off. And if Smiley does go over to first base, then stop and try and steal a run. You've got Strasburger over down there at third base. He can fly. Chu pops that out of play. And the count moves to one and two. Yeah, there's a lot of op options you have with this kind of speed on the base pass. There's also another option of letting Chu hit one out of the ballpark. There you go. Which he has shown the uh, inclination to do quite a bit lately. Last night being the latest example. The Shields on the move. The pitch swung on and missed. And that will do it. And the Rangers come back to tie the ball game. They get a run on three hits and strand two. After two, Rangers three, raise three.
by Bart. And on Sunday, August 30th, the first 7,500 kids, 13 and under, will receive a Shinsu Chu blue batting helmet. That's sponsored by Dairy Queen. Head on over to TexasRangers.com, or you can call 972-RANGERS to get your tickets. James Loney starting off the third inning for Tampa Bay, and Giovanni Gallardo giving a new lease on life. The ball game tied at three. Gallardo has allowed uh, three runs on six hits in the first two innings against Tampa Bay. Loney, an RBI single in the first inning as he takes outside. One ball and one strike. Maloney now 23 RBI for the season, hitting at 272. Pokes one the other way, and that's back into the seats. A ball and two strikes. Loney with the most at bats against Gallardo on this uh, Tampa Bay team. A lot of that goes back to the National League days. Loney with the uh, Dodgers, and of course, Gallardo with uh, Milwaukee. Slowly tapped on the right side. Odor charging. And a little flip to Napoli for the out. One gone. And before Logan Forsythe steps in, we're going to send it over to Rick Renner, who has a Mazda game break for us. All right, Rick, thank you. It was a pretty tough series for both those teams. Hotly contested games have come back. They have a few more played to play against each other, too. You know, it's like, this is an exciting time for baseball. I mean, this is the pennant race. I mean, yep. typically you wait until September, but, hey, there are so many teams that are so bunched together. This is, that, this is the time now. It's not just wait until September. Yeah, it's strange the difference between the American and National League as far as that goes this year. National League is, you know, fairly cut and dried if you right. look at things. I mean, the, the wild card, uh, I think the Cubs and Pirates have like a four-game lead or four-and-a-half game lead over the next closest competitors. And the uh, division races are, are not that close with the possible exception of uh, the Mets and, and if Washington can ever get back in gear. American League is... Uh, Tough races, except the AL Central. That's the only one where Kansas City has really separated themselves from the rest of the pack. Everything else is bunched up. The wild card is bunched up. And if you throw Detroit in there, there are seven teams within four games in that wild card race. Makes for a lot of interesting baseball the rest of the way. Three and two, the count to Logan Forsythe. One, on, one out, nobody on. Payoff pitch from Gallardo. Left center field. Strasburger and Delano DeShields converging, and Delano DeShields cutting in front of Ryan Strasburger. Fortunately, the ball was caught and nobody was injured. And in their defense, they have not played that often uh, with each other in the outfield. Communication may be a bit problematic. Yeah, and that's something they're going to have to work on. This is the second time in the last week that they've done this. And, you know, one of the things or one of the issues is Strasburg is a center fielder as well. Right. So as a center fielder, you're taught to take everything that you can get to. So Strasburg still has that in his mind, even though he's in left field. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you want. You want an out or a fielder, period, to want the ball. But you've got to have some communication when you're out there because the last thing you want to do is run into something, one into Work, uh, run into one uh -huh. another. Get it out, Mac. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so they, they've definitely got to communicate better. Yeah, and, and how does that communication happen? Is that a matter of just talking to each other between innings? or? Well, I think what you have to do there, number one, you have to look and see where one another's playing. You have to look over every pitch because from pitch to pitch, you can, uh, you know, adjust your position. So you've got to look around at each other and know where, know where one another is. And then as you're going after the ball, know the mentality of your left fielder, know the mentality of your right fielder. If Lionel DeShields has to go toward left, he should know, he's got to know that, hey, I've got uh, Strasburger out there. Right. He's probably coming my way, so I need to be looking out for him, and I've got to yell louder that I've got it. And once those corner outfielders hear that center fielder, they've got to back off. Okay.
Now I'd say somebody on the on the Ranger bench suggest those things to young outfielders. I hope so. Yeah. They, I mean, that's that's just one of the rules out there. You've got to communicate, especially in, in Major League Stadiums. No play on a ball that uh, went about 130 feet. And uh, Odor coming in, Elvis coming over. They were in the overship. Difficult for either one of them to uh, get in position to make that throw. And it ended up being Elvis flipping it out of the glove. You know, again, that's communication. You're in that overshift. Elvis doesn't have a great angle, but he's got to know that Odor is right there. It's an easier play for Odor. He's going to make the play. And as a second baseman, I understand that Odor probably didn't, you know, really raise his voice to Elvis and holler, I've got it, I've got it. Sometimes you have to override that guy. This is my ball. It's a better, it's a better play for me. And let him know that you're there. Well, Cabrera, who doesn't really need any help getting base hits, has one that's kind of gifted to him. His first of the afternoon. Now Desmond Jennings. And that brings up another point, Mac, that play we just had. A problem you run into when you go into extreme overshifts is guys are playing in positions next to each other that they've never played in before. It makes it difficult. It really does. And that just makes uh, makes it that more, much more important that you have to communicate. You've got to talk. You've got to be looking and, and knowing where everyone is. No door. He will throw out Desmond Jennings, and that'll do it. No runs a hit, one man left as uh, Giovanni Gallardo puts up a zero. After two and a half, Rangers three, Rays three. Edition. The next dollar hot dog day takes place on Wednesday, August 19th. Rangers taking on the Seattle Mariners. Come on out to the ballpark. It's a midday matinee and have a tasty lunch of dollar dogs. TexasRangers.com or call 972 Rangers to get your tickets. Mariners will be in here starting tomorrow night. Three games set. Prince Fielder leading off the Ranger third inning. A 3-3 ball game. Fielder. Had a long fly ball, a long line drive, I should say, to center field that Kevin Kiermeyer had to retreat hastily to get on that play. Shinsu Chu, who was at second, tagged, went to third, and eventually scored on Beltre's sacrifice fly. 1-1 one, one pitch. 1-2. One and two. Michael Young. No, that's not Michael Finally, back to the plate. Prince leaning on that breaking ball, two and two. Prince second in the American League. That batting average of 325. How about the last seven ball games, Fielder is uh, heated back up after having a downturn. In and out of the glove of Kurt Casale. 
Prince with a little extra life here. Prince also comes into play today with the second highest daytime batting average in the American League, 375. Left field, ball slicing back toward Desmond Jennings. One gone. Adrian Beltre will be next. Adrian Beltre. Drew Smiley right at his uh, limit. The streaks we were talking about. Nine straight starts with uh, four or fewer hits. He's right at four right now. And uh, ten straight starts with three or fewer runs. And he's right at three. Beltre takes a strike. Adrian with a sack fly his first time up. That is 34th RBI. He brings in a uh, four-game inning streak. <laughs> what in the world <laughs> is going on? Beltre now talking to Trip Gibson, the home plate umpire. <laughs> I, I don't remember ever seeing that. I, I don't think I have. Jump back in there. With the footwork, though, it could only be Adrian Beltre. <laughs> That's amazing. 1-1 one, one pitch. Yeah, knowing Beltre, if Smiley had thrown, he probably, probably got a base hit. Probably. <laughs> oh, goodness. The 2-1. Just pulled foul down that left side. Two balls, two strikes. Beltre during his four-game hitting streak has gone seven for 16. It's a 438 average. He's been getting on base too. He scored five runs in those four games. It's foul back. Still two and two. Adrian today playing in his 2,521st game. That's 51st on the all-time list. Hey, you start looking at the numbers for Adrian, and he is climbing up the all-time list. That ball is belted to left field. It is on its way. Goodbye. Home run number 406 in the great career of Adrian Beltre. The Rangers lead it 4-3. This is a professional hitter at his finest right here. His first at bat, he gets a sacrifice fly for eight pitches, biting off some tough ones, fouling them off, getting another pitch, got a pitch that he can handle, and then this at bat, on the sixth pitch of the at bat, fought off a couple tough pitches, got one with, that he can handle, and boy, did he handle it. Well, Beltre, as that chart showed you, one behind Duke Snyder now. Adrian with the sole possession of 52nd place. On the all-time home run list. Napoli trying to go back-to-back, -back, fouled off. Here's the sixth pitch of the at-bat, right down the middle, up in the zone, and he didn't miss it. Can you imagine an offense? Adrian Beltre's hot, Fielder's hot, Moreland's hot, Josh is hot. The shields getting on base consistently. Yep. 394 feet. That blast by Beltre. Can't forget about Chu being hot. That's right. It's the perfect time for this one to get really hot and get that long ball stroke working. Well, that is 11 for the year now. 2 2 again. Happily checking his swing. He did not go around. He appealed down to. First base umpire Mark Carlson confirmed it. So Napoli has run the count full. Mike trying to get aboard in front of the Rangers shortstop, Elvis Andrews. Well, four runs on five hits for the Rangers. And Napoli to left field, hooking into the corner. One hopping off the wall. Jennings will play it in. Napoli with his first hit in a Ranger uniform this time around with a ringing double. 
look very similar to 2012. Yes, it did. There we go. Mike Napoli joining the hit parade. The Rangers are making Smiley throw pitches. The sixth pitch of this at bat. Napoli gets it inside part of the plate. Drills it in the left field for a double, but love what the Rangers are doing. Smiley's at 64 pitches right now. And we're just in the third inning, so this is exactly what you want to do. Run that pitch right. count up, and, and while you're doing it, do some damage yep. as well. Jim Hickey out there to uh, give Drew Smiley a chance to catch his breath. The, the crowd uh, pays homage to Mike Napoli. Nap with that ringing double to left field. Yeah, we, we talked about Matt coming in. A guy just coming off the disabled list. The one thing you can't allow him to do is go out there and have quick pitch innings the first couple and settle into a good rhythm. Right. Well, I think it's definitely a disadvantage for him throwing in the day game where it's so hot and they're making him work and right. work uh, an awfully long time early. Now, this is the 18th pitch of this inning coming up. The rest have been 25 and 20. So he has not had a chance to get out there and have a, a quick inning to uh, get off the field and kind of get into a groove. Elvis Andrews had a butt base hit. His first time up there. Takes that fastball in for a strike to even the count. Well, Elvis now hits in each of his last three games. He is now three out of eight in the three games of this series. Napoli the lead from second as Smiley checks him. Two and one. Looks like Smiley's starting to go to his off-speed stuff now. Try and rely on that and try and get the Rangers off balance. They've been pretty patient. Mm -hmm. Left-hander comes back to the plate. Hard hit up the middle, but backhanded by Forsyth. Elvis thrown out. Napoli on to third. He's there with two away for Rugnet Odor. Well, Elvis hit it pretty sharply. But came up empty. Man, I love the way Elvis is swinging the bat right now. Pretty much all of his outs are rocket somewhere, right at somebody. So he gets a pitch out over the middle of the plate, right back up the middle, but they've got him played perfectly this time. Looks like that ball got a little assist from the mound, too, to kick it to the right toward Forsyth just enough. No, two away. Here's Odor, who went down swinging the first time and he faced Smiley. He lines one, but right at the second baseman, and that'll do it. Adrian Beltre, though, with his 11th home run of the year, number 406 in his career, gets the Rangers back on top. A run on two hits, one left after three, 4 3, Texas.
Welcome back to Globe Live Park. Buzz and Mac, we got a big time recording artist here, country recording artist. It's big Pat time. Green, that's yeah. right. You know, he lives in Fort Worth now, big Ranger fan, but you're out here signing copies of your new CD that was released when, Friday? Friday, yeah, but I don't know if big time means three time Grammy loser, but yeah. yeah that's close enough. <laughs> I, I was in the race, yeah. but yeah, man, we're having a blast. Uh, it's the first record out in four years, and uh, I'm just so proud. And obviously, uh, our, our connection with the Rangers, every time we have a home win, you know, they play one of my songs. And, um, yeah, I just, Liebman and, and Simpson and all those guys have been so nice for me through the years. So I, I, I owe a lot to the Rangers. I understand, like, it, uh, if you buy a Ranger ticket, you get your CD, Pat Green CD, for $5 over the next few days? Yeah, every home game, uh, and it's exclusively with the Rangers. But, yeah, every home game, if you buy a ticket, you get the, the CD for 5 bucks. So come on, do it. That is a great deal. Now, Not early and often. There you go. There you go. Okay, <laughs> September 19th, when the yeah. Rangers take on Seattle, you perform a post-game concert That's right, right here. right. Yeah, man. You know, and, and listen, you don't have to beg me very much to come out and do a show at the ballpark. I've done several shows out there on that turf, so I'm happy to be back. Uh, well, good seeing you. I'll let you go sign a few CDs. Good seeing you. And, uh, go Rangers. There you go. Root on those Rangers. That way, Pat Green, Buzz. All right, Noxie, thank you. Good, got to have in your corner. Matt Green. Kevin Kiermeyer started out the uh, fourth inning, dumping a little single into center field. Now Kurt Casale up there. Rangers lead by one. Casale takes strike one. Casale had the sacrifice bunt back in the second inning. Well, Yavani trying to do something that uh, has been a little bit problematic for. Uh, Ranger pitchers of late. That's put up a, a shutdown inning after you get the lead. Rangers have kind of fallen into a pattern, with the exception of Colby Lewis last night. Of course, he had a little extra run support to work with, but uh, Rangers have been giving back some leads lately. That's a, a troubling thing to get into. It, it really is. It kind of deflates uh, the offense. And, you know, I know the pitcher's not going out there trying to right. do it, but. Uh, it, it can be deflating for that offense, especially the back and forth games, which is what it's been so far. That'll help. How about a 5 4 3? And Napoli makes the tag. A great pickup by Nap. And he spun around right as Casale was going by. Thank you very much. That's a pretty acrobatic play by Nap. Very nice. Hiermeyer is a fast runner at first base, so he was down there. Right there on Odor. We were trying to get him down, but uh, kind of let it go just a little early. The throw was up the line, but Nap, the graceful Nap, <laughs> makes a nice play coming off the bag and being able to tag Caselli. Put out that big paw with the ball in the glove and said, here, run into it. There you go. So base is empty two away now. That is exactly what Giovanni Gallardo was looking for. John Jason up. Nap was going to play a form tackle on him. Sit down. I'll just tag him. Jason, one out of two. Had an RBI single in the second inning, driving in his 11th or 12th run of the year. Jason now four out of seven in this series against the Rangers. On the left side, that's going to slice back into the seats. Over to take a look. Ryan Strasberger. See Nap on the bag, and he sees the throw is going to take him off the bag. Picks it. Gets himself into position to make a tag. 2 1. Now 2 and 2. Rangers again in the overshift for Jaso. Uh, Adrian Beltre, the lone ranger on the uh, left side of the diamond. He's midway between second and third. He's had playing the rover spot out there and medium right field. Three and two. The second time in three at bats that Jaso has run the count full. He's trying to get aboard with two outs. Grady Sizemore will follow him in the order. Gallardo to the wide, the payoff pitch. Lost it. Fastball got away from uh, Giovanni upstairs, and uh, that is the first walk.
that he has issued this afternoon. One on, two out. Size one. Well, folks, on Tuesday, August 25th, Rangers uh, will provide a throwback giveaway. The first 15,000 fans, 14 and older, get a Giovanni Gallardo power, powder blue T-shirt. That's courtesy of uh, Dr. Pepper, Albertsons, and Tom Thumb. This is TexasRangers.com or call 972-RANGERS to get your tickets. Sizemore has doubled and popped out. Takes outside for ball one. All of a sudden, Gallardo now getting his pitch count up. And one thing he wanted to you know, change from last time out, be a little more efficient. He's up to 66 now and still hasn't worked his way through the fourth inning. Breaking ball, finds the mark. It is one and one. Twenty-nine-year-old right-hander Giovanni Gallardo, Fort Worth product, Trimble Tech High School. Good fastball, one and two. You know this could be a very important inning. That shut down inning we were talking about a minute ago. Got the double play turn. Finish off size more here. I think the momentum stays with the Rangers. Mm -hmm. Jace on the lead from first. Sizemore waiting. And Gallardo misses high. It's two and two. Now, Yavani's tempo with uh, nobody on was improved. I think uh, with somebody on, though, he still tends to slow things down a bit. Fly ball to left, that sends Strasburger back, but with room. And Ryan makes the catch, that'll do it. No runs a hit, thank you for the double play. One man left. After three and a half, Rangers four, Rays three. Rangers leading four to three. Thanks for having a little uh, mid-afternoon snack. Sunny day out here. And he, the uh, haze has lifted a bit. Clouds uh, parting. A lot of sunshine now flowing into Globe Live Park. The Rangers making things even brighter as they lead four to three. Bobby Wilson to start off the bottom of the fourth inning. Wilson, Strasburger, and Delino to Shields. Drew Smiley back to the hill has been touched for four runs on six hits by the Rangers through the first three innings. So both of his streaks that he brought into play here tonight here today have been uh, broken. Bobby Wilson reached on a fielder's choice in the second and came around to score. Pitch on the inside part, outside part of the plate for strike one. Smiley even mentioned had the uh, 10 start streak of uh, three or fewer runs allowed. That uh, has been broken. That was every start that he had 
with the Rays since joining them last July. They also uh, had a nine consecutive start streak of four hits or fewer. And that snapped today. Rays have uh, lit him up for six. Out of play to the first base side. The count is one ball and two strikes to Bobby Wilson. Smiley back to the plate. Wilson has spent time with the uh, Angels, the Rays, and now the Rangers. He was uh, with the Rays a couple of times this year before being designated for assignment. That happened back on uh, June the 12th, and then he... Uh, was outright to Triple A Durham on the 14th. Came back up to the Rays in the end of July, and then with one game after that uh, designated, Rangers got him on a waiver claim. Two balls, two strikes. And there's a view from uh, well, that's what the the ball girl down that first baseline sees <laughs> over her shoulder. Two two pitch popped him up Forsyth, the second baseman waiting for it to come down. Well, Bobby Wilson pops out. That's how the fourth inning begins for the race. Now Ryan Strasburg. The Rangers uh, have already won won the season series against Tampa Bay. They have won four of the six meetings thus far. Split to uh, two games apiece in the uh, meeting down at Tropicana Field in May. And the Rangers winning the first two in this home series. The Rangers trying to get back to uh, closer to 500 here at home. They come in at 25 and 29 here at Globe Life Park. But as we mentioned, lately it has been going the right direction. We are trending upwards. The Rangers have won nine out of 10. That right on the heels, though, of a streak where they went 1 and 12. Well, they're definitely making up some ground. They've turned it around at home. The last road trip wasn't that wasn't that impressive. But they've definitely turned things around at home, and this is where they needed to do it. Right. They st they're still playing good baseball on the road. They just needed to play much better baseball at home, and they've been doing it. Well, that a boy. Mac, the, the championship teams that you were on in the, in the 90s, here always played well at home you guys had to have had the feeling that hey this is our place and we're just going to beat your brains out here you know I, I think you have to have that mentality when you're at home and I, actually those teams we had that mentality when we were on the road as well and if you're going to win you have to have that mentality period Rosberger bidding for his first major league home run and he's got it a line drive into the seats Ryan Strasburger has gone deep and the Rangers lead it five to three about that We've got two newbies to the group now a couple guys you don't really expect to uh, hit the long ball they come at pretty good times this uh, gives the Rangers a two run lead the other night the Shields tied the ball game Ryan Strasburger his first major league home run and you called about timing being everything but gives the Rangers a two run lead and a very important Ball game now. Delano to Shields, who had his first major league home run the other night. Smiley trying to drop a breaking ball, and it was right down the middle. Strasburg looking like Beltre dropping that knee down a little <laughs> bit there. 362 feet on this bullet. That didn't have a whole lot of hang time. Wow. Strasburger had 10 home runs at uh, AAA this year when he was called up. So this uh, not unfamiliar territory to him. Always nice, though, to get that first one under your belt. It really is. Something he'll always remember. He'll remember the count, the pitch, and, of course, the pitcher. 
Delano running up as if to bunt. And they check down the first base as to whether he bunted through it. Mark Carlson said, no, he didn't. Three and one to Delano. Check swing, ball four. Delano to Shields with his second walk of the day. He has been aboard all three times. We're going to go back to the first inning and take a look at Delano the Shields and what he's done and what he means to this ball club. You see a line drive to right center field, makes the sliding catch, saves a couple of runs, then he gets on bases next time up, steals second base. That's the bottom of the first, and then comes around and scores on this hard hit ball by Chu. He was at second base tagging up, but you look at that blinding speed that gets him around, so speed is definitely taking effect. And uh, there's no substitute whatsoever for speed. And here he is again, his third at bat, fourth inning. He gets a walk, his third time on base in three, three, uh, three appearances. He stole his 21st in the first inning. And uh, you would probably assume that he's going to try for number 22 here very shortly. Alex Colomay, as you see, warming in the uh, Tampa Bay bullpen. Chu, one out of two as he steps to the plate. Shin Tzu, an RBI double, and a run scored in the first inning. Nothing and one. The Rangers, two more home runs here today. And all of a sudden, they've gotten that uh, home run ball in play here at Globe Life Park. Had three last night. Snap throw to first, and... Back in time, Delano to Shields. See the Shields get back, not too far off. Rangers with three home runs last night. That matched their highest total in any home game since uh, April of 2013. Well, it's been a while since they've had uh, the pop here at home. Chu in the shallow center. Kiermaier still coming on. Makes the catch. The Shields back to first. There are now two out. So Chu, one for three. Heads back to the Rangers dugout. And it will bring up Prince Field. Fielder has lined to center and flied to left field. Nothing for two today. The Rangers, though, have uh, scored at least one in every inning so far. They play in the fourth. Smiley with not a great move for a left-hander, but he buries it enough to where I would think it's probably tough to, to get a read on all of them. You know, he's slow and deliberate, so it's fairly easy to pick up for a base dealer. You know, just, just looking from here, when he goes over to first base, he doesn't lift that right leg up as high as he does when he comes to the plate. Uh -huh. And those are little things that you can look for or that you need to look for if you're stealing the base. You want to try and find anything that's not, that's out of the ordinary. That was almost out of the ordinary. It was. <laughs> Delino, Delino thought he had that red. He's got a step and a half toward second. Said, no, I got to go back. Picked that knee up a little higher that time. Must have heard you. I think he did. Yeah. And he tried kind of the same thing again. Delano wasn't buying that time. I guess that brings up the other question, Mac, with two outs and a one nothing count to fielder. Would you think about stealing now, or would you try to let Prince swing the bat for a Strike or two. I'm going to let Prince swing the bat. No contact. It is one and one. You know, you've got to look at your personnel that's behind you when you're hitting at the top of the lineup and you're a base dealer. You've got to know who's behind you. You don't want to take the bat out of the big fella's hands, especially especially when they're swinging the bat. Well. But yeah. they're in the middle of the lineup for a reason. That means that means they produce runs.
fielder fouls it out of play. Now with two strikes, does that change? You know, it, thinking? In, in my mind, it doesn't change because one, with one swing, there are two more runs. Me stealing second base doesn't really make a difference. He's taking the ball out of the ballpark, and if he hits a ball in the gap with the speed that Delino has, that's going to score a run. Yeah. Even if you're at first. At, even yeah. at first base, absolutely. Right. Smiley. Just a little calling card. One of our latest Hall of Fame in, in, inductees used to tell me all the time, Mac, get to first base. Juan Gonzalez, the best RBI man I've ever played with. Get to first base. I'll drive you in from there. And he would. Yeah. I'd be tired. But he <laughs> would. <laughs> you know, that, you know, and that philosophy. I, you know, and Juan believed that when he was telling you that. Oh, there's no so question that's, about that's it. What, that's what his thought process was. All you have to do is be on base. If, yeah. you're, if you're on first, I will drive you in. 2-2 two -two pitch. Got him swinging. Well, Smiley always tough on left-handers. He got fielder for the third time today. And the Rangers, though, get a run across. Ryan Strasburger is first major league home run. A bullet into the bleachers. We'll move on to the fifth inning. It's now the Rangers five and the Rangers three. Rangers baseball on Fox Sports Southwest is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by Mazda. In every car we make, you'll see why driving matters. Evan Longoria, first ball swinging and a two-hopper to Elvis. One pitch and one away for Giovanni Gallardo and the Rangers. And today uh, at Gold Fly Park was a, a giveaway, a, an Adrian Beltre bobblehead. Medical Center of Arlington sponsored that. And I, I would have preferred the, to see Adrian down on one knee into that uh, deep bend that he goes into, but that's okay. That would have been nice. Nice likeness. Maybe the next one, though, get him all the way down in that home run pose. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be a little different the next one does. <laughs> you know, Adrian, of course, had his... Uh, contract option picked up so he's going to be here for a couple more years which is great news for everybody involved James Loney takes a fastball for strike one veteran leadership on a ball club important Loney base hit to center his second of the day it's huge it's absolutely huge you have to have a number of veterans on a ball club, I believe, to help stabilize things. Because throughout the course of the season, you're going to hit a losing streak. It doesn't matter how good you are. You're going to hit a losing streak, and you've got to have some veterans around for the younger players on the team to be able to look at and say, hey, these guys aren't panicking. Why am I? Yeah. 
You know, and sometimes it's going to take a veteran to go over to, you know, a young player or two and say, hey, fellas, don't worry about it. We'll be fine. Just keep playing hard. Things will turn around. They'll change. And that's when you're really tested, isn't it, when you when you go through adversity for maybe the first two times or three times? Oh, there's no question because everybody's great when you're winning. Sure. You know, what's your character when you're losing and not playing well? You're going to throw in the towel and say, hey, that's it. Oh, man, I just, you know, that's we're not ever going to win again. You can't do that. And veterans have a way of, of, of calming things down. I would imagine, Mac, you've seen over the years that different kinds of leaders, whether it be somebody vocal or, or somebody that just does it by example about how they go about their, their daily business. Yes, there are a lot of vocal leaders and there are a lot of quiet leaders that lead by example. They don't have to say very much, but when they do, I think a lot of times that quiet one that uh, calls a meeting or goes over and says something, you know you've got somebody's attention because you're not typically that guy that right. goes out there and says all of that. And there's one right there, Adrian Beltre. You don't see him. He's not a demonstrative type of leader, but he leads by example. You can tell right now, well, you know, he's been going out there with a, a thumb issue for the last two or three months. And how can anybody else in the lineup or on, on the roster say, oh, I can't go today I don't feel well. Yeah, a little when, sore. Right, I'm just a little sore or, you know, I've got a stomach ache when Adrian Bill, when Beltre's out there with a thumb about to fall off. Let's check in with Emily. Well, guys, I'll tell you another one that was huge, especially when this team struggled so mightily in the month of April, and that was Prince Fielder. And it wasn't so much that he was, you know, raw rawing and in guys' faces or anything like that, but it was just the way he carried himself with a calm and a confidence um, and also, you know, a bit of you know, lightheartedness to, for everyone to not, you know, get too down, take things too seriously. And I think he was huge in that month of April and a big reason why they bounced back the way they did in May. Well, I think that's a great point, Emma. It, uh, and and the, the fact that Fielder got off to a, a good start was important, not just for the ball club, but for Prince. And I think for Prince to be able to be that, that quiet leader, he needed to get himself back to a position where he felt good about his contributions. Yes, he really did. And even though he felt fine, you have to get through that mentally after coming back from, from a, uh, an injury, and especially one as severe as Fielder's was. You have to get through it mentally. You can tell yourself, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I feel great. I'm back to normal. But until you actually go out there and do it, it's a different story. Yeah, we were talking about the rehab process, and, and Prince, of course, went through a, a lengthy rehab process after that uh, neck surgery. And you have to question yourself, am I really going to get back to where I was? You know, what kind of player am I going to be? I don't care if it's coming back from a hangnail. When you lay off and there's been something physically wrong, you question your ability to do what you did before. You do until you actually get out there and do it right. once again. You're in doubt. You don't know. You may feel great. You may feel fine. You may even feel like you felt before the injury. But until you go back out there and perform, it's still in question. Yeah, I think Prince getting off that start and doing what he did in the spring. And he convinced himself, he said in spring training, that, hey, everything's fine. I'm uh, I'm capable of doing exactly what I did before. And uh, I think that, that got the load off his mind. And then he was able to carry himself, as Emily was saying, as the guy that people looked up to. Yeah, I think you're right. And, you know, I actually I think he felt that way during the offseason, even before spring training. That was going to be his mindset. I'm fine. I'm going to go out here and continue to do what I've done my entire career and uh, and just be fine and healthy. You know, in the meantime, Giovanni Gallardo has worked himself into a little pickle. He got runners at first and second with one out. Loney and Forsythe back-to-back singles. And he's dealing with Azdrubal Cabrera. Switch hitting shortstop. Hitting about 6,000 in the last few weeks. That's out of play, and the count evens at two and two. Not quite 6,000, only seems like it. Pretty close to 500, though. Cabrera, even with the time that he missed, and that was a significant number of games, still leaves all the shortstops in the American League and extra base hits. Cabrera's got about two thirds the number of at bats most of them have. Check swing. The count has now gone full. Well, Yavani struggling a bit here. Cabrera at the plate. Loney and Forsyth on the bases. Desmond Jennings 
is waiting in the on-deck circle. Rangers uh, with a two-run lead. That in a little bit of jeopardy here. Payoff pitch on the way. Got him swinging. Win with a breaking ball on three and two, and Cabrera kind of disappointed in, in that effort that he made uh, hitting that pitch. And probably a little disappointed that he didn't get a fastball he was looking for. Yeah, that's a big out right there. Big strikeout by Gallardo. Goes with the breaking ball down in the dirt. Cabrera surprisingly swung at it. He's had a pretty good eye. An even better bat. So big out number two. Sam Freeman. Ranger left-hander getting ready out there in the right center field bullpen for the Rangers. A two away. Here's Desmond Jennings who has tripled and grounded out. Gallardo's first pitch to him. Oh and one. Jennings with a season average at 268. He was out of the lineup from early May until uh, just the start of this series. And uh, knee surgery on that bulky left knee. And he has come back with a vengeance. Had nine uh, appearances in rehab games. Got himself back together that way. Loney at second, Forsyth at first. One ball, one strike to count. Averages with runners in scoring position, Tampa Bay next to last in the American League. League average at 259. Fouled away. And the count is two and two. Might add a note to that, though, since the uh, first of August, that Tampa Bay Club has turned things around a bit offensively. They have not charged to the top of the heat, but they've, they've done pretty well. They have the best batting average in the league since the first of August. They did endure a pretty miserable July. Gallardo getting set for the 20th pitch of this inning. Got him swinging. Back-to-back -back strikeouts. The Rays strand runners at first and second after a couple of hits. We played half the ball game. The Rangers five and the Rays three. On Friday evening, and fans who stick around after the game will be treated to a post-game fireworks show. Set the music highlighting the history of pop music. Fans uh, using the online coupon code fireworks at TexasRangers.com/specials 
can get seats for $14. And seats are going fast, so don't wait to get yours. It's texasrangers.com slash specials and the coupon code fireworks. Well, the Rangers coming to bat here in the bottom of the fifth inning, leading 5-3. to three. Alex Colome has come out of the bullpen to uh, take over on the hill. He's a 26-year-old right-hander out of Santa Domingo in the Dominican Republic. Takes over for Drew Smiley, who went uh, four innings, gave up all five runs. They were earned on seven hits, two walks, and four strikeouts. And Drew Smiley in his uh, return to Major League action. A little bit less than what he was looking for. Rangers, though, did a pretty good job of combating the crafty left-hander. Colome will face Adrian Beltre to start off. Adrian's had... A perfect afternoon. He is one for one, a sacrifice fly, and a solo home run. Now with 35 runs driven in this year. Golome with that uh, cut fastball. He will use the right-handers quite a bit. He'll throw... A rather straight four seam fastball also mix in a slider. One one pitch. Top of the strike zone. One and two. Colomay's done a pretty good job since going to the moving to the bullpen. He's got a 2.45 ERA and his 10 relief appearances, but since the All Star break and his eight relief appearances, his ERA is. Point seven nine, so an ERA of under one. And yeah, Beltre reaching for one, pops it into shallow center, but Forsythe has a play on it. That is out number one. So Beltre retired for the first time this afternoon, and it brings up Mike Napoli. And let's go over to Jim Knox. All right, Buzz, appreciate this. The Texas Rangers summer reading program is now over. These kids having a blast of the game today because they earned a ticket to the game, read 20 hours, and they've read a lot of books. What, what was your favorite book? Because My favorite book was The Tiger Rising. Yours? Uh, the Hypnotist. There you go. What about yours over here? Uh, Mike, uh, three-year-old, they, they said you read a book and it was Peter Pan, yeah. something like that, okay, and yours? Principal there we go. And you guys having a good time? Had a parade this afternoon before the game, and you guys are having a good time. Congratulations, all these great readers. And I'm not leaving here until you put a smile on your face. Right here, right here. There we go. All right, appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the game. <laughs> all right, Noxie. Mike Dampley is going way up there, and uh, it comes down into the glove of the shortstop as Drupal Cabrera. There are two outs. And before Elvis Andrews steps in, let's send it over to Rick Renner, who has a Mazda game break for us. All right, Rick, thank you. Well, there's uh, some ERAs taking a battering in the uh, American League East. At Boston hung up 37 runs in, in just two days against Seattle in Fenway. See, the Boston now has come back to tie that game today at 8 8. I don't know if the Mariners are going to have any pitchers around when they come in here tomorrow. That would be good. <laughs> Elvis is swinging a miss. It's 1 and 1. Andrews this afternoon, a butt base hit and a ground ball to second. Now Seattle scheduled to have uh, Taiwan Walker oppose Cole Hamels tomorrow night. Tuesday, right now looks like uh, Chichi Gonzalez and Hisashi Iwakuma his first start since his no hitter. And then Martin Perez and Mike Montgomery on Wednesday afternoon. Was fouling that pitch back to stay alive. Golden Bay, you can see, pretty tough against right handers. A lot of, he has a good fastball velocity wise, but a lot of uh, movement on both the cutter and the slider working their way away from right handers. It makes it really difficult to hit. Anytime a pitch is moving away from you, it's very difficult to hit, especially if a pitcher has more than one. 
Colome to an abbreviated windup. Tried the inside corner at 95. Two and two. Elvis with the average at 255 as he bats with the bases empty two away here in the fifth. Now a full count. Well, Elvis running the string all the way out, trying to get aboard. Rugnet Odor, the second baseman, is in the on-deck circle. Rangers five runs on seven hits. The Rays three runs on ten hits. Colomay with the payoff pitch. Longoria on Deloney, and that'll do it. First time this afternoon, the Rangers have gone down in 1-2-3 fashion. After five complete, it's the Rangers five and the Rays three on Fox Sports Southwest. Labor Day for the fourth annual Rangers Labor Day race. You can enjoy the scenic 5K course. It finishes right here on the field or bring the entire family for a 1K fun run. Sign up today at TexasRangers.com slash race. Giovanni Gallardo back out to start the sixth inning. Kevin Kiermeyer will leave things off for the Tampa Bay Rays. Kiermeyer bluffing a bunt takes the breaking ball for strike one. Kiermaier, two for two, a double and a single. He has driven in a run and scored once this afternoon. Gallardo moving that cutter right in on his fist, and Kiermaier, well, you wrap that off his knee. He's been taking a beating all weekend. He yeah. fell one off of his foot Friday night. Fell another one off of his foot last night. And today, oh, oh goodness. That does not feel good. Kevin Cash and the trainer for the Tampa Bay Rays out there to check on Kiermaier and console him a little bit. I don't think that's consolable. No. They need an ice bag right about now. That might be the only thing. He's got that protection down on his ankle, but... Uh, you have to have on catcher shin guards, and even that might not have gotten the whole thing covered. Remember the cold spray they used to have? Back yeah, the day? ethyl chloride. <laughs> that might help. <laughs> <laughs> Give a little that on your skin, you don't feel anything. Look at the spin on it. That's the cut fastball, or Giovanni calls that his slider. That ball boring its way in right on the fists of uh, Kiermaier. Kiermaier, though, quick enough to get enough of the bat on the ball to ruin his right leg. You know, that's a pitch. If you swing through it, you, that's fine. I wonder what the next pitch is going to be. 
I didn't like guys like that. No? <laughs> Not unless they were on my team. Yeah. Of yeah. <laughs> yeah. Test your resolve as a hitter to see if. Uh, yes. We'll find out just how hard he hit that ball off of his yeah. knee. Yeah. I've known guys that would just not swing the bat. You're the right. Pitch. I just put it on your shoulder and say, whatever. You got it. Oh, two. Giovanni not, not giving him an opportunity to, to pound one off his leg again. One ball and two strikes. Spencer Patton. Loose thing. And there's an off-speed pitch that... Kiermaier is able to reach out and hit into center for a one-out single. Or I should say a leadoff single. That's the last thing you want to do to guys hit a ball off his front leg. Is throw him a slow breaking ball out away from him. Not a great selection right there. And it's the 11th hit of the afternoon by the Tampa Bay Rays. Kiermaier three for three. So he has his good speed at first and Kurt Casale, the catcher, who grounded into a double play last time up. And Giovanni Gallardo will try to induce the same kind of play here. There goes Kiermaier. The pitch is low. The throw is not in time. Kiermaier with his 13th stolen base. Just able to beat the throw by a fingernail from uh, Bobby Wilson. Kiermaier got a great jump. And he stays on the bag. Well, Bobby Wilson out before yesterday's ball game working on his throwing, and uh, that looked like a much better delivery. I'm sure he'd be okay with that effort. Now Casale. Has to count even up after that swing and a miss. Sacrifice bunt for Casale came back in the second inning. Hitting at uh, 228. Eight home runs this year. That's fairly significant for Casale. Ball foul away. His eight home runs and 79 at bats now this season. Last season in 72 at bats, he had none. Well, he has found the uh, the secret of power as a catcher. I don't know what that secret is, but he's found it. He has, because we were talking about, you know, the glare earlier in the ball game, and how tough it is to see in day games. You'll see a number of batters go to the plate with glasses on, because they're trying to knock down some of that glare. That takes them getting used to to hit with glasses on. I mean, color yes, glasses on? yes, I, I could never do it because I always I always saw the bridge of my nose. Uh huh. So there was some, you know, a distraction there for me. So I just couldn't do it. I would just have to try and fight through the through the glare. Right. Got him swinging. Pitch up. Casale foul tips it into Bobby Wilson's glove. Well, Gallardo with his fifth strikeout of the afternoon. And that may be the last pitch that he throws. Jeff Bannister on his way to the mound and he motions to the bullpen. He wants the left-hander Sam Freeman to come on into the ball game with the left-hander John Jaso scheduled to bat next. So Sam Freeman coming into the ball game. Uh, Giovanni Gallardo finished after five and a third. He is uh, leading five to three. Freeman will make his way in and we'll take a timeout. We're back to Globe Life Park right after this.
on demand in true HD on over 400 mobile and connected devices with MLB.tv Premium. Real-time highlights, live look-ins, pitch tracking widgets, and a whole lot more every night on every device. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Just visit MLB.tv for details. Sam Freeman, the 27-year-old left-hander on now. This is his 44th appearance of the year. Freeman, uh, that ERA coming down. It's at 270 now in the opposition. Still not hitting very well against him. That's what uh, Freeman likes, 218 league average. John Jason, the scheduled hitter, called back to the uh, Rays dugout with uh, Freeman on the mound. It'll be Brandon Geyer on as a pitch hitter to take over in the uh, DH spot. Geyer, a 254 hitter, five home runs, 23 driven in. Freeman, a little inside move to uh, check the status of Kevin Kiermeyer at second base. Sam worked an inning last night, gave up a hit, had a couple of strikeouts in that uh, 12 4 Ranger win. You don't want to give Kiermaier a walking start, but with a two-run lead, you also don't want to get locked in on the uh, runner and uh, forget about the hitter. Right. You've got to concentrate on the hitter, keep an eye on Kiermaier. And Sam drops in that first pitch for strike one. And do that. Yep. Geyer with that four-game hitting streak coming into play. He is four for ten with one-two bagger in that uh, four-game span. One ball and one strike. I think we noticed last night, Mac, and you'd commented on about the off-speed pitches. We hadn't seen Freeman utilize the same way he did last night, and very effective when he's done that first couple of pitches here. Yeah, I think the report around it right now is that he's coming at you with all hard stuff, so that's what you're looking for early. So anytime you can get away with that uh, getting the over off-speed pitch when you know uh, the opposition's looking for fastballs, you're in the driver's seat as a pitcher. Two balls and a strike. Ranger infield uh, shaded around to the left for Geyer. Another off-speed pitch. Two and two. Now Freeman in his last six outings now has not been scored upon. Only one time has he given a run since the 26th of June. Time pickoff play at second with Rudnett Odor sneaking in there. Rangers on top five to three here in the sixth inning. Yeah, one on and one out. Freeman. Oh, he had Geyer locked up. If that had been a strike, Geyer not in any position to pull the trigger. Uh, just a bit low. He's definitely looking for something off speed on that pitch. So three and two now. He got the off speed pitch there, and that found the mark. A strikeout as Geyer caught admiring on his way to first base. And he is back to the dugout. Two gone. Freeman going to the inside part of the plate with a breaking ball. He does a great job facing right handers. He's held right handed batters to a 164 average. Again, with a reverse splits, left handers tend to hit him a little bit better. Now, Grady Sizemore, another left handed hitter, the scheduled batter, and uh, Kevin Cash said, no, I'm, I'm going to go against the, what those splits are telling me. I want a right-handed hitter up there. So Richie Schaefer has come off the bench, and he will be the pinch hitter. Schaefer, a 278 average. A couple of home runs, two driven in. We've seen him in each of the first two games of this series. One ball, no strikes. I 
think a lot of attention has been paid to the Rays hitters desire to ambush that fastball early in the count. I just haven't seen many of them. Especially the guys coming out of the bullpen. And Schaefer pops it up. Out behind second, Elvis and Rube dead. And Odor makes the call on the catch. Elvis says, okay, fine, you take it. That'll do it. So Freeman gets the two hitters he is asked to face, the two pitch hitters. No runs a hit, one left after five and a half, five, three Rangers. Now for the Sonic Slam Inning, brought to you by Sonic. Today's jackpot is worth $100 and dinner for two at Sonic Drive-In. If a Ranger hits a home run during this inning, Mary Broman from Fort Worth will win $100. And if a Ranger hits a grand slam this inning, Mary is going to take home $25,000. You can register at any participating Sonic restaurant. Well, good luck, Mary. Rugnet Odor will start things off. Alex Colome back to the mound. Colome came on to work a 1-2-3 fifth inning. Bottom third of the Ranger order here in the sixth. Odor, Wilson, and Strasburg. Rugnet is struck out and lined to second. Oh, for two today and currently hitting at 271 as he takes outside for ball one. Richie Schaefer stays in the ball game, takes over in right field for Grady Sizemore. And a chopper foul. I kind of wonder if uh, Kevin Cash didn't get the uh, pinch hitters backwards in that inning. He, he had uh, Brandon Geyer, who's probably a better defensive outfielder than Schaefer. Pinch hit for the DH, so he couldn't go into the into play defensively or lose your DH. So Schaefer, who was uh, who pitch hit for Sizemore, had to stay in the game to play right field. You know, I think if it comes back to haunt him, he'll uh, then he'll realize. Yeah. That. One and two to Rugnet. Colome back to the plate. Odor slaps one to the right side. Nice play though by. Logan Forsythe throws out his counterpart and went away. Bobby Wilson. Next will be Bobby Wilson. Keone Kella loosening in that Ranger bullpen. So now you get to the part of the ball game where the Rangers have that uh, tail end of the bullpen with all the power arms out there set up. This is. We talk about the teams that uh, have been good the last several years. And they shorten the ball game by having power arms down there that come in one after the other and close games out from 
the seventh inning on. That's what the that's the point the Rangers are trying to get to. Yeah, and that's that's tough, but that's what that's what the good teams have. They have a guy for the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning, and some of the best teams that have a guy for the sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth yeah. inning. You yeah. know, you shorten that game, especially when you're at home. And Bobby Wilson nailed by that uh, Colome fastball. You got Bobby right up under the left arm. Yeah, that never feels good right there. Left bicep, got him. And that was a fastball and not a break. Yeah, ball. it sure was. Now popular, Wilson, used to getting uh, foul tips down at first base, not uh, not rubbing it, not giving Colome the satisfaction. The one on, one out, Ryan Strasburger has had a perfect afternoon. He's singled and homered. His first major league home run in the fourth inning. Colome with the first pitch, and Ryan swinging through a high fastball. Strasburger up since the uh, fourth of the month, fourth of August. There's a young man out there that uh, caught that ball that Strasburger hit. Sure, there was some negotiation taken care of that uh, Richard Price, the clubhouse man for the Rangers, very famous for taking care of the uh, fans that want something in return. I understand Hoggy is a very fair negotiator. Takes care of the fans. Very good. He's had a, an awful lot of practice. Yes. Yes. He he has. This is his first rodeo. Oh and two the count to Strasburg. Orion with the two hits now hitting at 250. We'll take you back and show you that home run in the fourth inning. Drew Smiley leave that off speed pitch out over the plate, and Strasburger really cranked it out of here. Only 365 feet on a line down that left field line. Tapper by the mound, going to be a tough play for Cabrera, and not in time. Strasburger hustling down the line. He has great speed, and Cabrera had one opportunity. And that was to make the bare hand play. Made a good play, just couldn't quite get it. That's all you could do on that play there. That's just a hit, especially with Strasburger running. Great play by Cabrera. Comes in bare hands it, throws it off balance from down low. But Strasburger can just absolutely fly. Wow. He has that uh, extra gear that Delano De Shields has going down there. He does. He really does. They must have been in the same line when they were handing out wheels. You know, a lot of guys have overdrive. Those two guys have super drive. <laughs> well, the hit batter now an infield single, two on, one out. And here is Delano to Shields, who is one for one with two walks. And an RBI single in the second inning, driving in his 25th run of the year. Looking to add on here. Rangers leading by a pair. They would love to get some insurance. Bobby Wilson at second. Strasburger trailing him at first. 1-0 pitch from Colome. You can see that difficulty that I'm talking about. Mac with the, everything moving away from right-handers. Makes it very tough to hit unless you've got the extendo bat ready. <laughs> Line drive to right. Coming on is Schaefer. He makes the catch. And uh, staying put at second. Bobby Wilson, Strasburger back to first. But the lineup had the right idea and that shot the other way. Just stayed up in the air a little too long. Well, here's Shinsu Chu. Chu one for three. That RBI double in the first inning. Average at 245 for the Ranger right fielder. 
This is his 22nd game now since the All-Star break. He has 16 RBI, so that part of his game really coming on nicely, too. And you have to remember, and Mackey goes back to something you were talking about, the bottom of the order getting on base. Chu has been hitting in that second slot a lot of that time. So he's had the opportunities because the bottom of the order has been getting on. Yeah, you look right now, we've got eight and nine, eight and nine hitters on base. And he's got another opportunity to pick up some uh, pick up some runs. Yeah. Yeah, Colomay wants Kurt Casale to come out there and uh, explain things to him. Or maybe the other way around. Chu, after that double, struck out in the second. And uh, last time up in the fourth, had a fly ball to center. Two on with two out. Choose average coming in exactly where it is right now, 245. That's as high as his average has been in better than two months. You have to go back to uh, June 13th when he was hitting 248. Two and oh. Chu, you remember, got off that terrible start in April. He hit less than 100, 096. And then it really turned it around in May, as did the ball club. He was a big part of that. Got his average up to over 250. And then fell off a bit in July. Two and one after the foul ball. You know, when you're going through something like that, it's pretty much like the rehab thing that we talked about. When you're going through a, a, a period, a month, a little over a month, and you're hitting under 100, you're wondering if you're ever going to get a hit again. <laughs> do, you just, do you start questioning whether you can get a hit again? I mean, is it that bad? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Am I somebody, really this bad? Send somebody else up there with my jersey on? Yes. <laughs> Colomay ready. The 2 1 pitch coming to Chu. That got the top of the strike zone. That's in that Chu zone. Just get that last year, especially. I called on him time and time again. I think they think he's taller. Yeah. Bobby Wilson with his viewpoint from second base, peering in at the signs. Gets his lead, the 2-2. Sky to center field. Kiermaier waiting for it to come down. And makes the catch. That'll do it. Well, the Rangers get a hit batter and a base hit, but strand two. We have finished six. It's the Rangers five and the Rays three on Fox Sports Southwest. Game summary this afternoon.
got started with Shin Su Ju, a double to center field. That brought home the speedy delight on the shield just in front of the tag. And Adrian Beltre is the 11th home run of the year, a solo blast in the third. Features uh, on top. Then Ryan Strasberger unloaded his first major league home run into the left field bleachers in the fourth inning. And the Rangers uh, with that 5 to 3 lead now, they will turn the ball game over to Keone Kella as he enters to take over in the seventh inning. Kella took uh, about 10 days back down to the minor leagues to kind of manage his innings a bit. His appearance is still, this is his 52nd appearance of the year. Back up uh, and ready to go. He has taken over here to face the middle of the order. Evan Longoria, James Loney, and Logan Forsythe. I haven't seen Keone since the last game in Minnesota. He worked an inning in the third, gave up two hits. And, uh, that was just about it. A check swing strike. Longoria 0 for 3. He has struck out, lined to short, and grounded to short. And this is exactly the situation you like to see him in when the a close ball game, but he can't do anything to tie or put the Rays ahead. Yeah, this is the best time to see him. Nobody on. The, the most damage he can do is add a run. Longoria, 275 with the average. And he has gone on strikes. Keone Kellett. Heating him up upstairs, 97 for the strikeout. One away, James Loney coming up. Let's check in with Jim Knox. All right, Buzz, this was the scene before the game. The Fox Sports Fan Express rolling in for the great town of Texarkana. That's right, on hand, plenty of great Ranger fans and fans of Fox Radio 1400 in Texarkana. And we also have, enjoying the game so far, guys, huh? Jason Mears, I understand you were... Jason Mears, I understand you were inducted in the Fox Fan Fest Hall of Fame yesterday. Front page of the Sports News or Texarkana. That's big news there, Buzz. How did you become a member of the Hall of Fame? Uh, I've been a Texas Ranger fan for about 35 years. I've uh, been to over 200 games and uh, just a loyal sports fan. Well, that's Hall of Fame material. Congratulations. And, Laura, I understand you never miss a game. I don't miss a game. There I do go. not miss a game. Right, well, enjoy the rest of the game. Congratulations, Jason. Great to have the fans here from Texarkana. Thank you. Buzz. All right, Noxie, thanks very much. One ball and one strike, Kelly. Facing James Loney, who is two for three this afternoon. Loney with a pair of singles, one of them driving in a run. That was back in the first inning. Now 23 RBI for the uh, Rays first baseman. And he gets a pitch in on his fist and pops it into center. The line over there, that is out number two. Keller coming in, doing a good job. Striking out the leadoff hitter Longoria. Gets a little bit in, in on Loney to pop him up to center field. Two quick outs. Well, Logan Forsythe with a couple of singles today. Also had a fly ball to center. He's hitting at 278. Fastball in just above belt high. Kella in that last outing did uh, receive a blown save as the Twins came in on to tie that ball game. Rangers went on to win. Keone has 10 holds to his credit this year. For a you know, guy in the uh, not in the closing role, that's about the only statistic you can hang your hat on as your efficiency in the bullpen is compared. One and two. Kella against the uh, Rays now has faced eight hitters in his career. He has one walk and he's retired seven, four of them on strikeouts. The one two pitch. Make that five on strikeouts. Forsythe completely overmatched with that breaking ball. 
Two punch outs in the inning, a one, two, three frame for Kella. We'll take the stretch, five, three Rangers. And let's join Chuck Morgan as he introduces God Here Bless America. Please, ladies and gentlemen, will you please rise as we remember the servicemen and women who are serving our country at home and around the world. Performing God Bless America today from Arlington, Texas, the Liberty Bells. of the day. T-Mobile allows us to uh, show you this one from Jane. Jane, thanks for the great photo. We appreciate it. And if you folks would like to submit a photo, just use hashtag Southwest Data Strong Fan. And your photo might end up being shared with everybody else on the Ranger TV network. Coming up uh, in one of our upcoming broadcasts. And that's all made possible by T-Mobile. Prince Fielder leading off the Rangers' seventh inning. It'll be Fielder, Beltre, and Napoli. Face Alex Colome. Colome uh, came into the ball game to start the fifth inning. He kind of restored order. Retired the first four that he faced. Hit Bobby Wilson with a pitch. Gave up a base hit to Ryan Strasburger. But then got uh, DeShields and Chu to end the sixth inning. Prince today. 0 for 3. A couple of fly balls and a strikeout. Rangers, for the second time in this series, being out hit by the Tampa Bay Rays. They were uh, out hit on Friday night, still managed to win that ball game. Last night, of course, a big 12 to 4 win. Rangers all over Tampa. Pitch outside. Colome doesn't look like he wants uh, much of Prince right now. Being very careful. Sam Dyson loosening in the Ranger bullpen. 3 0 pitch. And the green light, and uh, Colome got inside on Prince. 
Loney takes care of it first, one out. And before Adrian Beltre steps in, let's send it over to Rick Renner for a Mazda game break. All right, Rick, thank you. Well, the Rangers with a win today can uh, keep that at a four-game deficit and also put a little room between uh, themselves and the Tampa Bay Rays, who were just a half game back of the Rangers coming into play today in that wild card race. Beltre shoots one off the end of the bat, back into the seats. Adrian one for two, solo home run in the third inning is the 11th of the year. Also popped out to second, had a sacrifice fly back in the first. Colme with the 0 1 pitch. You see Adrian do that every once in a while just to make sure the guys know he can still get around that inside pitch. <laughs> you don't want to pitch me in there. Even though that probably gives him as much trouble as any pitch in, in a pitcher's arsenal. Yeah, I would think so. He covers that hole up very well. Let's put it that way. He does. I, I like it when he, you know, throws the bait out there to him. <laughs> Drops the bat on a swing, yeah. walks around the plate, picks the bat back up, and then hits a bullet somewhere. Because <laughs> <laughs> Sally. Jack of the box coming up after that thing. One and two the count. Adrian at 266 with the average. And you're right, Mackie, you mentioned before about getting Beltray hot and getting Fielder hot at the same time. That getting Mitch Moreland when he's back in the lineup. Adrian gone down swing and the out recorded at first base. That would, uh, that would give this Ranger team uh, something to be very strongly built on going down this going down the stretch. It, it really would. I mean, Beltre can carry a team. Prince can carry a team. Josh can carry a team. You know, the guys in front of them are getting on base. DeShields is getting on base. Chu's getting on base. Elvis is swinging a, a really good bat. Mm -hmm. So that's seven guys in the lineup that have the potential to be swinging the bat pretty well. I think, you know, number one, that's one of the reasons the Rangers are playing so well. They're getting some production all the way throughout the lineup, and especially I cannot leave out uh, Bobby Wilson and Chris Jimenez. Yeah. yeah. You know, at the bottom of the order. Odor has been swinging a, a pretty good bat. He's, you know, kind of gotten into a funk here a little bit lately. But, you know, you've got seven, eight, nine guys on any given night that can put, uh, put together a nice night and drive in some runs. That's a pretty good lineup. Yeah. That. Yeah, folks trying to get that Napoli chant going. Mike, one for three today at a uh, third inning double. Napoli, a member of the Rangers, of course, in 2011, 2012. Had the, uh, the big year you know, up and put the Rangers over the top, get him into the World Series for the second straight year in 2011. As Joe Madden put it, that was the year of the Napoli. Two balls and a strike. Yeah, checking with uh, Kurt Casale, make sure that the Rays catcher is uh, going to be all right. Overshift to the left side for the Rays infield. As Colome comes back to the plate. Two and two. Napoli for the year now with the average of 204. 13 home runs and 40 RBI. You get a good look at the defense for Tampa Bay.
Napoli settling back in. Rangers scored in each of the first four innings. Took a 5 to 3 lead. It's stayed that way ever since. And Rangers captain breaking out that Sunday afternoon bug. I think he took the spider away, didn't he? That would probably be good. <laughs> that was a good idea. I can only imagine what some of the fans think when they see that thing climbing down in front of them. Yeah. Go work on something else. <laughs> yeah, a little loosen up. He's uh, going to do something athletic here. There we go. <laughs> Three and two to Napoli. Pop foul back this way. We'll try it again on three and two. fans will remember Mike Napoli there for most of his uh, two years here. Every time he came to the plate, he would swear it's a 3-2 count. <laughs> and he would do something. Yeah. Love to see him get back into that mode for the last couple of months. Another 3-2 pitch coming. Line to left. That is down for a hit. Over to cut it off is Jennings. Napoli well, hold on. Jennings gets the ball back in quickly, but Mike, with a two-hit afternoon, a double and now a single. Love to see that. You get Napoli hot as well, playing against left-handers. Moreland's going to get most of all of the right-handers. No substitution for good, uh, good offense. We've got some guys that can swing it. Gets out over the plate. Gets the hit to it and crushes it to left field. The Rangers now with nine base hits. Napoli at first with two outs. Here's Elvis. Elvis has one of those nine hits. It was a bunt single back in the second inning. One ball, no strikes. Elvis faced Colomay last time up. That was in the fifth. He grounded out to third. Drew Smiley started with the first four innings. Alex Colome came in to start the fifth. He's been in ever since. Two balls, no strikes. Left-hander Xavier Cedeno loosening out in that left field bullpen for Tampa Bay. Rays had to make a roster move with the uh, activation of Drew Smiley for today coming off the disabled list. Kirby Yates who, uh, was treated rather roughly last night. Got an option to triple-A. Loney backpedaling right on the line in fair territory. Makes the catch and that'll do it. Napoli's base hit with two outs goes for naught. They strand a runner to the Rangers. After seven, 5-3, the Rangers leading the Rays.
Welcome back to Globe Life Park. Buzz and Mac time for the progressive fan of the game. Got to give it to Reed, a big time Ranger fan. Plus, he comes all the way in uh, from Argyle with a nice sign. Good artwork there, Reed. Here's with his dad, David, and, and brother, Will. Now, Reed, how long have you been a Ranger fan? Since day one, Noxie. Never miss a game. All right, well, good for you. Well, here's the bag. Congratulations. Way to go. Way to root for those Rangers. Anything else you'd like to say? Go Rangers! Back to you, oh, Buzz. There we go. All right, very good. Way to go, wow. Reed. All right, congratulations. Nice going, Jimmy. You trained it very well. It's good. That was pretty good. Actually, he's training his replacement out there. He is, isn't he? <laughs> now we go to the uh, top of the eighth inning. Sam Dyson has come out of the uh, Ranger pen now to take over, so Keone Kella, a perfect seventh inning with a couple of strikeouts. Now Sam Dyson on. This is his eighth appearance in a Ranger uniform. Had uh, 44 games with the Miami Marlins before coming over to the Rangers at the trade deadline. He has been scored upon one time in a Ranger uniform. That was uh, the first outing that he had against the San Francisco Giants here on the 1st of uh, August. Gave up a solo home run to Hunter Pence. And that's been it. Got that power sinker and a uh, little cutter slash uh, changeup type pitch. And he gets a ground ball out to Elvis. One gone as Drupal as Cabrera grounds out. Desmond Jennings coming up. Let's go down into Emily Jones. Well, Buzz, as you talked about Sam Dyson with a hot start to his Ranger career, here's how he self evaluates. I've experienced it before. Um, and everybody has their ups and downs. They, you know, fail every now and then. Um, I've done it. Everybody's done it. Um, so you know, I'm definitely used to it. So I think luck has a lot to do with it as well. So I seem to get in some jams, cause some problems on my own. But luckily, I've been able to get out of it. So Sam Dyson responding well to being placed in high leverage situations. Hopefully that trend continues here today, guys. All right, Emily, thank you. Yeah, and you know, Dyson, in each of his outings, has uh, given up hits except for one. He had one clean outing, but he had a walk in that one. That was against uh, Seattle in Seattle last week. Other than that, he's given up at least one hit. And I, I think you know part of what he was talking about, Mac, and you can kind of amplify this that. A ground ball pitcher is going to give up base hits on ground balls sometimes. There's no question. It's going to happen. Uh, I, I like the, the ground ball hits as opposed to, you know, having the ball leave the ballpark. Belcher got a great jump on that coming in and fires from the hip to get Desmond Jennings. You know, and he said it there himself. You know, sometimes he works himself into it. He causes those problems himself. But as long as you can get yourself out of it more times than not, you're going to be pretty successful. You know I mean, but you're going to give up hits. It doesn't matter who you are. You're facing major league hitters, and somebody's going to get you sooner or later, whether it's a long ball, ball up the middle, uh, you know, a swinging bunt, you're going to give up hits. Mm -hmm. He's gotten two quick outs here on ground balls. Now Kevin Kiermeyer, who is three for three this afternoon. Thought he saw a pitch away from him, and he could bank on that he wasn't going to hit off his foot. Here, <laughs> Meyer, two singles and a double. He has had a stolen base. He has scored a run and he has driven in a run today. Now 27 RBI for the fleet footed and center fielder. Pulls it on the ground to Napoli right at the bag. How about that? A seven pitch inning for Sam Dyson. Three ground balls. We'll see you later. That is closing it down. We're going to the bottom of the eighth. Rangers leading five to three.
here at Globe Life Park in Arlington. This concludes a three-game series between the Rays and the Rangers. Up next, the Mariners of Seattle, who come to town tomorrow for a three-game series, beginning with game one tomorrow. Seven o'clock start here on Fox Sports Southwest. Mitch Moreland and Nelson Cruz, a couple of the hot-hitting principals in this one. 15 home runs for Nelly since the All-Star break. Pretty impressive stuff. Hopefully he will cool off tomorrow as the Rangers and M's begin a three-game series. Thanks to the folks at AT&T Uverse for getting us ready for the series with the Seattle guys. All right, and thank you. Now the left-hander, Xavier Cedeno, on now to uh, take over here in the bottom of the eighth inning for Tampa Bay. He'll face Rubnet Odor, Bobby Wilson, and Ryan Strasburger. Rangers leading 5-3. to three. Cedeno, who we saw here on Friday night, 48th appearance of the year for the left-hander. Good fires, strike one. Cedeno, a 28-year-old out of Puerto Rico. Came over to the uh, Rays from the Dodgers in this uh, past April. Rugnet Odor is 0 for 3. He has lined out, grounded out, and struck out today. Got a hang and breaking ball just a little bit quick. The ball and two strikes. Today, own, go ahead, Mac. Sedan has been pretty good against left handers. He's got them hitting just 205. So he's not uh, not an easy left hander for left handers to hit off of. Now, Sedano entered the ball game the other night in the fifth inning. Gave up that uh, fly ball that Prince Fielder hit to dead center. The Kiermeyer went up over the wall and pulled back in. Rugnet Odor gone on strikes. That's how the eighth inning begins against Sedano. Next will be Bobby Wilson. Prince hit the other night. I think that's the closest anyone's come to, or any left-handers come to, really doing any damage against him. Uh -huh. Only giving up two extra base hits all year long to left-handers. Bobby Wilson has been on base a couple of times, on by a fielder's choice in the second. He came around to score in that frame. He was hit by a pitch in the sixth. So 0 for 1 officially, or 0 for 2 officially today. So Daniel to the plate and gets a strike. So Daniel originally came up with the Astros. His first uh, foray to the big leagues was back in 2011 for three games. Originally a Colorado Rockies choice in the 31st round of the 2004 draft. Sean Tolleson getting ready in the bullpen. So Daniel's 1-2 pitch. Got him swinging. The throw to first. That will be out number two. So Daniel back to back strikeouts. And Ryan Strasburger will be next. Seeing the uh, the curveball that Sedano throws about half the time, he gets a lot of strikeouts that pitch, particularly left-handers. We've seen it be devastating to the right-handed hitters as well. Here's Ryan. Three hits today, one being his first major league home run. He had uh, two hits in his first six ball games at the big leagues. Well, he is. Gone 150 percent over his total. No balls and two strikes. Strasburger, along with the home run, singled in the second, singled in the sixth. There he goes with another curveball. Very effective pitch, especially if he can get it down and in to right-handers and down and away to left-handers. We saw Odor go down. Odor go down to it. And then again, we saw Wilson go down to it. 
Our Fox tracker showing you the pretty consistent location there. And he tried the back door and didn't miss by much. But if that if that had been a strike, there wasn't anything Ryan was going to be able to do about it. <laughs> Seen everything down on the inner part of the plate. And no way to pull the trigger on that pitch. Now the one-two. Good job laying off that curveball. That will even the count. Rangers leading 5-3. They have been out hit this afternoon, 11-9 by Tampa Bay. Rangers trying to win their seventh in a row here at home. Got him swinging. Cedeno comes in, strikes out the side in order. Rangers gone in the eighth. On to the ninth inning here at Globe by Park. It's Holly time. John Thomas is coming in with the Rangers leading 5-3. Looking to finish off their season high seventh straight home win in control. Sean Tollison on deck to come in in the ninth to finish this baby off. Hey, coming up after the game, we got an exciting Rangers live. Pudge Rodriguez will join me. That's worth the price of admission right there. We'll hear from manager Jeff Bannister. We got Emily Jones working in the clubhouse for interviews. We'll hear from all the stars of this one and get you ready for the Seattle series with Cole Hamels back on the mound on Monday night. Right now, back across the diamond to Buzz and Mac to finish this baby off. All right, Rick, thank you very much. Well, Sean Tolleson, the 26-year-old, in for his uh, save opportunity number 24. He has gone 22 for 23 thus far. His 51st appearance of the year. We saw him last night. He got the save in just six pitches. If he can uh, top that here this afternoon or not, but uh, certainly a, a refreshed Sean Tolleson. Kurt Gasali, the catcher, leading things off. Dallas and missing with ball one. Six pitches is pretty good. One, two, three. I'll settle for one, two, three. Okay. Yeah, he may feel like he needs a little more work. Yeah, get some more work in. Yeah. Gasali, 0 for 2 this afternoon. Had a uh, sacrifice bunt of the second since then. Has rounded into a double play and struck out. Dallison, 52 in a third innings of work has walked 12 and struck out 56. That's pretty good. Fly ball to right. Chew waiting for that to come down out of the hazy sunshine. One away. That's the important one here in the ninth inning. Get that first hitter out. Takes a lot of stress off you. Next will be Brandon Geyer. Donaldson last night didn't face Geyer. He faced Jaso and Schaefer and Longoria. 
or I should say Friday night. Dyer 0 for 1 came on as a pinch hitter and struck out in the sixth inning. One and one. Rays really haven't uh, mounted much of a charge since the Ranger bullpen has taken over. Sam Freeman took over with one out in the sixth. And since then, nine straight Rays have been sent down by the Ranger pen. Freeman had a strikeout and a pop out. Yoni Kello worked a perfect seventh with a couple of strikeouts and a fly ball. Sam Dyson, three ground balls in a seven pitch eighth inning. And now Sean Tollison on. One and two. Dyer, a 253 hitter as he stands at the plate. 29,167 on hand at Globe Life Park this afternoon. Seeing if the Rangers can't uh, complete a sweep of the Tampa Bay Rays. Dyer making it tough on Tollison here. A couple of foul balls. Looks like he's uh, extended himself today. Nine pitches already. <laughs> <laughs> Tollison, the Baylor X, set to go back to work. Two and two. Tollison this year against right-handers has held them to a 179 average. Left-handers had a little more success, but 256, not a bad mark for a pitcher. Up the middle, that is going to make its way into center field for a base hit. You know, Geyer just reaching out and poking it right back up the middle into the vacated area. The one on one out. Richie Schaefer, the schedule hitter, is called back. It's going to be Daniel Naba, switch hitting outfielder. That base hit snaps a string of nine straight retired by the Ranger bullpen this afternoon. Daniel Nava hitting at 222. Up there from the left side against Sean Tollison. Rangers looking for that ground ball double play. One ball, no strikes. Nava's hitting just 167 against right handed pitching so far this year. That pitch outside. Two balls and no strikes. Nava claimed off waivers by the Rays from uh, Boston back on the uh, fifth of the month. Boston this year never really got it untracked. He hit just 152 in 29 games. Napoli to second. They get one there. The return throw not in time. Great effort by Napoli and Andrews to turn that 3-6-3 and just couldn't quite get it over to first in time to nip Nava. Nap's got a lot of confidence to make that throw. He does. That was a very difficult throw to make in that situation. I probably would have just stepped on first base and taken the easy one because if it hits him in the back, it, you know, things could go downhill rather quickly, especially with that man coming to the plate right now. And I would think on that play, Mac, is it a benefit having been a catcher in Mike Napoli's case that you make that snap throw and not and know exactly where it's going to go? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't. I, that's that's a very difficult play to make. I think you've got to take the easy out in that situation. It's out number two, and you just go from there. Yeah. Well, it boils down to Evan Longoria again. And uh, we've seen this guy in situations like this, and it's not real comfortable. He's the tying run in this ballgame. Nava leaving from first. He will 
move into second on defensive indifference. A one ball and one strike now. Nava out at second. Longoria 0 for 4 this afternoon. He has struck out twice, lined to short, and grounded to short. Tollison to Longoria. Two and one. Two seventy four Longoria's average with runners in scoring position. He has not been a bad hitter nine for his last 13. That's pretty good. That's really good. Almost 750. And Tollison making a very concerted effort not to leave anything in the middle of the plate to Longoria He's falling behind three and one. If Longoria extends this inning, James Loney, the left-handed hitting first baseman, is next. You know, I, I really don't mind that. Loney's not a, a big power hitter. So if Longoria is at first base, I'll take my chances with uh, Loney at the plate. Yep. I agree with you. Especially once you fall behind to Longoria. Right. right. He's a guy that can hit the ball out the other way. So staying outside doesn't necessarily mean he can't take it that way. Check swing on an off-speed pitch, and the count now is full. Well, the string has run out as far as it can with uh, Tollison and Longoria. Crowd getting on its feet at Globe Live Park. Trying to cheer Tom, Sean Tollison on to his 23rd save, and the Rangers on to their sixth or seventh straight victory here at home. Three and two with two outs. Tollison, the letter-high set. Payoff pitch. Got him swinging. Collison punches out Longoria. The Rays get a hit, but strand a runner in the ninth. And the Rangers sweep the Tampa Bay Rays in a crucial series with wild card implications. Rangers came in trailing Tampa Bay, and Tampa Bay will leave a full game and a half behind the Rangers in that wild card race. And depending on what the outcome of the Angels game in Kansas City is tonight, Rangers could be as little as one half game out of the wild card race. Well, that's a great series by the Rangers. They knew what they had to do. They had to play very well against this Rays ball club, and they did it. You look at the standings there right now as we speak. Rangers back two games over 500. Just a game out of that wild card, like Buzz said, depending on what happens in, a, in Anaheim today. Last out, fastball up in the zone to Longoria. Gets him and shuts it down. Nails down that sweep of the Rays. 23rd save for Sean Tollison in 24 opportunities. Big hug from Bobby Wilson. A great job by the Rangers again this afternoon as they complete the sweep of the Tampa Bay Rays. And there is the broom that was brought to the ballpark in anticipation of this moment. And a well-deserved sweep. And the Rangers get it done 5-3 to three here this afternoon. And the Rangers now two games over 500 for the first time since the first week in July. Let's head down to the field. Emily Jones is standing by. Thank you very much, Ryan Strasberger. Congratulations, your first Major League home run. Is it everything you thought it would be? It definitely was. It's awesome to do it in this kind of atmosphere for the first time. I still still can't believe it. It was awesome to run around the bases for the first time like that. Take me through the at-bat. Uh, he, uh, the first at bat, I was patient, and he, he I got a fastball off of him, so it was kind of like. At least it's cool, right? Uh, yeah, it's cool. Okay. It's cool. Cold, cold. Okay, so take 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 me through it. What it was like coming off the bat? Uh, as soon as I hit it, I, I knew I got enough of it, and I was just hoping that it hadn't hooked because uh, a lot of times those like to hook towards the foul pole. And about halfway through, I saw that I stayed inside it enough, and it stayed pretty straight. 
So just jogging to first, it, it was awesome. I, I can't explain it. Bench players, you never know when you're, you're going to be called upon, when you're going to get your shot. How important is it for you to make the most of these opportunities when you get them? Yeah, it's very important. I mean, that's a tough spot to be in, and you're not used to it, especially coming up through the minor leagues. But I know that uh, that's what my role was coming into it, and uh, that's what I'm here to do is just take the most of or make the most of my opportunities and and especially against left-handed hitters, do what do what I've done in the past, and I, I was able to do that today. And how about what this team did against a Rays team that came in very hot, chasing them in the wild card, now have surpassed them? Uh, how big was this series for you guys as a team? Really big. I mean, sweeping them at our own place, that's always, I mean, you want to win at home, but getting a sweep is huge, and that's good momentum going into the next series. All right, thanks for the time. I appreciate yeah. it. Congratulations. Thank again. you. Guys, we'll send it back up to you. Nice job, Emily. Yeah, congratulations to Ryan Strasburger and the Rangers, a three-game sweep of the Tampa Bay Rays. We'll be back to Globe Live Park to give you a lot more in our post-game. Rangers Live coming up also, so stay tuned with us. 5-3, the Rangers win it. We'll be back right after this.